Welcome, welcome to the second part of our Adobe Captivate series on how to create amazing e-learning courses. If you have not watched the first part of the series, please check that out because we cover a lot of great features in that video. Now, what will you learn in this course? We start off discussing the value and applications of object styles. We then get into importing and editing pre-existing PowerPoint documents. After that, we'll learn how to work with Captivate's amazing animation tools. We then get into the wonderful audio creation and editing tools that Captivate offers. We then do a nice deep dive into creating quizzes that you can use to conduct knowledge checks on your students. And finally, wrapping things up, literally, we go over how to customize the Captivate skin and table of contents. Now, this is an interactive course and we do provide class files for you. So occasionally you'll hear me say things like, pause the video and practice that. So you can go ahead and find the link to these files in the description below. Lots to cover, so let's get into it. And welcome back everybody. We are gonna start off this session two of our Captivate series talking about styles. Let's first define what a style is. A style is basically just a saved format. Why do we want to save a format? We want to be able to use that format over and over again so we can have efficiency and we can have consistency. So if we take a look at this little caption box that we have from a previous lesson where we did screen recording, you see that Captivate automatically generates this little caption box for us. And you'll see that, yeah, it kind of looks sort of how we want it to look, right? And then this one looks also kind of how we want it to look, but I might want to make some changes to this. But guess what? I've got so many caption boxes everywhere all throughout the place that I want to actually just change one and then make all of them follow suit. So there's that term again, okay? I wanna have consistency and I wanna be able to do it efficiently, okay? So let's just kind of look under the hood a little bit before we actually see how we can create styles. Let's see what's going on inside of the properties for each of these individual captions. So I'm gonna click on this caption. Let's bring up my timeline. So you can see here's my text caption. Great, there's text caption one, okay? So I can certainly rename that if you want to, okay? But I want you to notice over here that when I click over here on the right-hand side, you'll see it says default capture caption style. That's what this is. There's a little plus sign. It might've been modified along the way, it's fine. All right, and you can see I click on that one. Also, default capture caption style, okay? And you're gonna see I have them kind of all over the place, right? now. I decide I don't necessarily want it to look like this. Now, let's go ahead and go down a little bit further in our properties panel and see what options we have for ourselves. You'll notice here is this caption type, and there's a little drop down that's going to give me more options here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just choose like Adobe Blue. Okay, let's go ahead and choose Adobe Green. Let's keep going. Okay, let's just do Glass Blue. Okay, great. Now. You'll also notice that as I choose a lot of these, I'm going to get these other kind of variations, right? These little call out options potentially, or potentially I might see something a little different. If I come to here, I'm gonna to go to here. Notice how I can have kind of a different type of like Adobe pop-up with different colors on top of it. All right, so we'll maybe explore some of these, you know, in future lessons, but let's just kind of try to keep it a little simple for right now. All right, so I'm gonna make it so I'm just gonna have a very simple call out with no tails or anything like that. And I'm gonna come over to here and I'm gonna change the format even further, which is gonna be maybe to a different font type, right? So I'm just gonna choose maybe this one here, nice all caps. And let's just maybe make that 24. Okay, I like that. And then maybe you wanna change the color to something. Let's maybe do kind of a charcoal gray. I like that. Now, keep in mind, you've got all kinds of different options you can be working with in terms of your margins, top, bottom, left and right. You can be putting on different highlights of things if you wanted to, your text effects. We did some of this stuff in our last part of the series. Go ahead and check all those out, all right? But now, why are we here? We're here to make it that when I change this capture caption style, I want all of them to follow suit, right? So I really like this one and I want all the rest of them to basically mimic that. And I don't wanna to have to do that one by one manually. 
I'm going to use styles to be able to do that. Okay. Now you will notice that this default capture caption style has a little plus sign next to it. This one also does, right? It just means that they've been modified somehow from their original, right? Default capture caption style. Okay. So what we need to do in case that's ever happened is make sure that you're going to have this little checkbox right where we have this replace modified styles so therefore it's going to kind of go across the board and make those changes accordingly all right but now here is where the rubber meets the road here's where we actually get what we want to get is going over here to this little menu here that's as if it does not want to be found and we're going to choose save changes to existing style really strange language i'll be the first to admit doesn't make a whole lot of sense but what this is going to do is it's going to take what we have here and make this the default okay so i'm going to go ahead and click on this save changes to existing style it's going to say you have chosen to replace the overridden styles changes made to the overridden styles cannot be undone do you want to continue i'm going to say yes okay and guess what no more plus sign now and because I have this replace modified styles, I'm going to come down here and ah, look at that. Beautiful, right? Let's come over to here. Very nice. Look at that. And see, it's kept the little tail as it had it earlier. Okay. Click on that, right? Nice. That one has it and no tail because it didn't have a tail before. And I really, really like that. Okay. So let's now go over to here to a slightly different type of style. All right. So the object that we were just working with was the capture caption style okay now what we're going to work with next let me zoom in a little bit is going to be this guy right here what is this this is the blue highlight box style right and we made some modifications to this right and we really like it and we want it to always be that right but maybe you want it to be something different right so you have all these options for maybe you want it to be yellow right and maybe you want to put a stroke around it right something like that right just kind of make it really stand out let's go ahead and maybe just see what we can do here right click away and then oh okay you know what i really like that okay and if i come over here to some of these other ones oh you know what that doesn't look that way. And then some of the other ones I might want to see here, right? When I say, hey, click on that, they don't, they didn't inherit that. So I know, and my boss knows, and my client knows that, you know what, this is exactly what we want to be done is to look like that. So let's make it across the board. In other words, this is now going to be my default style. So not only is it going to change what's already here, but then when I bring in a highlight box, it's going to then have all of these style formatting options, okay? Which is going to be just this yellow and just this red, okay? So again, what am I gonna do? Click on it, come back over to here to my style name, click over to here, and then save changes to existing style, right? I'm just gonna say okay again. And then again, what happens? Let's go over to here to my next slide. Yes, beautiful, exactly what I wanna see. Scroll over here. Ah, oh, so nice. Across the board, it's making all the changes so I don't have to. Okay, and then this one, I probably want to maybe make this go over the entire thing. And then earlier we talked about, you know what? We actually want to just change the names. Click white area. Okay, so we can very easily do that. And that looks really nice, right? Like really powerful. I'm glad I chose that font. It looks really very clear, everything, okay? And again, this is part of that style. And if I take a look at some of my other highlight boxes, right? See, there's that one, all right? And then I would I could definitely make this a little bit bigger, okay? And then right click, on selection, and I can move that anywhere over here. And this is looking pretty good, okay, very visible. So now let's go ahead and just check it out in preview mode. So remember how we do that? I just wanna see the next five slides. I'm gonna do F10 as my keyboard shortcut or click on this and you can see here is the next five slides or certainly choose any one of these. Do F4 to do the whole project if you like. So I'm gonna do F10 on my keyboard, wait for it to load up and I'm gonna see all my highlights there and you're going to see fantastic there's my beautiful capture caption style 
great, wonderful. I can see all that there. Press the delete key. Good. It tells me that. And I've got a lot of work to do to kind of clean this up, of course. All right. But you can see how that works beautifully. All right. Now, let's just see something else now. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and just insert just a new content slide here. OK, I'm going to bring this up right here and let's just bring this to about 66, maybe maybe a little bit. Let's do best fit. OK, good. And what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of bring in something that's going to be, hey, this is just a little bit of text that's going to talk about whatever it's going to be. Right. So I'm just going to so go to a text caption and I want you to see here. This is my default caption style, not to be confused with my default capture caption style. OK, so this right here, we don't want it to be this size. We want to actually every time somebody brings in some text that's going to be text caption, we want it to look a certain way. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and make this nice and big. And I'm going to choose a different font altogether. Let's go to our good friend Bebas. OK, let's go even bigger than that. All right. And lovely. All right. Because maybe I'm going to do another section right after this to do a different type of set of instructions. OK, so this is going to be my default set of captions here. OK, so great. Fantastic. So let's go ahead. I'm going to say how to use the magic wand tool. OK, click away, make that. OK, that's great. And if you recall from previous lessons, if I wanted to make this centered right throughout the entire screen here, I can go over to window. I can say a line. And then what I want to do is I want to make this perfectly centered. You can see there it is center horizontally. And then let's also center that vertically. Beautiful. I love that. OK, now this still has not accomplished my goal of making it so the next time I bring in a text caption, right? So you can see here if I go to a blank slide. See, and I say text caption, it's still coming in all puny, right? Not very impressive. So what I need to do is make this my default. All right. So let's go ahead and do that one more time for our third type of object. And then we're going to see how we can do it in a slightly different way that you may appreciate. All right. So very simply, I'm going to go over to here and you guessed it. Save changes to existing style. Click OK. And let me scroll down here. Even though I have no text in it, you can see there it is ready for me to bring in some content. But keep in mind, it does not do all of our centering and all that stuff. We're going to have to do that on our own because that's not about what the actual styling does. OK, so next level around styles is to go to pretty much the nerve center where all of our styles live and where all of our object styles live. OK, so what we're going to talk about now is something called our object style manager. OK, and where are you going to find that? You're going to find that inside of the edit menu. OK, you click on that and you're going to see way down here is your object style manager. OK, so where are we going to go to manage our object styles? We're going to go to the object style manager. And wow, you have so many different types of objects to manage here, right? The different styles associated with them. So let's just kind of take it slow here so we can see that we have a grouping here called standard objects. And then within that, you have one called captions. And then within that, you have a series of different captions here. As you can see, here's my text caption, and that's why it looks the way that it looks. OK, all right, that's that's pretty cool. I get that. All right, and then if you kind of dig down deeper, you'll probably see your capture, right? There it is, default capture caption. Cool, that's the one that we created before. If I decide, you know what? I actually don't want it to look like this anymore. I can absolutely change it from here. If I'm going to set myself up for the future to know that whenever I'm going to create a button, I want it to look a certain way, I can do all that stuff here, right? Here's my highlight box, right? Oh, look at that. I can make changes from here. So pretty much every type of object you could think of, you can make your changes here 
instead of doing it on the front end. So totally up to you. So let's now go ahead and let's go back to our standard object. Let's go over here to our capture and let's now just do a slightly different variation on this. Okay. So let's just now go to, I don't know, halo blue. Okay. And let's go ahead and just move our mouse over here. Won't be able to see it, but you can normally see it over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and click okay for right now, come over to here and we'll be able to see there it is that made the changes. Okay. Let's go back to it again, edit object style manager. And again, I'm going to go to my standard objects, go over to here, but this time, when I can see this visibly, I'm going to make some changes to it so I can know, okay, what is this going to do before I even commit to it? Let's go over here to this Adobe pop-up, right? Actually, let's go to a different one, something a little prettier. Okay, let's try Adobe Red. And then instead of clicking on OK, I'm going to choose Apply. And then look at that. I can see it before I commit to it, right? Pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then guess what? every single one of these now is changed. All right. So really cool, really powerful. And again, it's about what efficiency and consistency. Okay. So therefore every single one of these now gets updated. So whenever you're working with these guys, it's very important to establish what you want to be working with, right? What kind of look and feel do you want? Now, many of you are going to be working on teams. And you're going to want to be sharing your styles with people. Some people may be sharing it with you. All right. So if we go back to the object style manager, I want you to see way down here is this option here for importing and exporting. Everybody see that importing and exporting. All right. Now, if I click on this guy here, you're going to see what am I going to export the selected style only all styles of selected object or all styles of all objects. If you're like, man, I just worked on like 15 different ones of these and I just want everybody to see all the work I've done. I'm the designer. I'm the one who's in charge of this, right? I've got the style guide. I know what fonts we need to use, what colors we need to use, everything. Let's stick to it. Then I need to share it with everybody so then they can import it, okay? So let's just say I'm ready to do that. I click on this and then guess what? When I choose export, you're going to see it kind of names it. Let me just go ahead and do this one more time. All styles, excuse me. I must miss that step. Click on export. And you're going to see here is the captivate styles file for the entire documents. Okay. So you can see that it actually does the entire documents captivate style files. Okay. So really, really heavy stuff here. Right. And then once I bring this in here, let's just go ahead and bring that into our class folder. You'll have that access to that. Call it whatever you want. It's up to you. And then it's exported successfully. I click OK, click OK. And then later on, when I'm ready to do a blank new one, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and go over here to Edit, Object Style Manager. And guess what? I'm going to import it. And I'm going to find my class files here, go over to here. And then bam, there it is. And then you can say import operations is about to begin. The style that you were trying to import may already exist. Do you want to overwrite the existing styles, right? Okay, I'm going to say yes. I'm going to take a little while. There we go. And now if we take a look, bam, there's that. And then you can see awesome, fantastic. I'm so happy. And now you can see if I'm ready to do a new object. And more specifically, I'm going to do new text caption. Holy cow. There it is. How to be amazing at Captivate. Okay. And cool. And there you go. Okay. So we're kind of just sort of doing a nice little round trip about this so we can actually see how cool that is to be able to create your styles, be efficient with them, but then ultimately how we can share them between projects, between teammates, okay, and collaborate, all right? And you can see how you can do it for every single object available, okay? And really, how are we defining objects? There's a lot of different objects around here, right? A lot of different things you might be working with you don't even realize, like click boxes and things like that. But if you want to really get a review on what they are, just really go through every single one of these to know what 
in fact an object is, click on it, make your changes, and then bam, save it, and then export it once you feel like you're confident with it and you are good to go. All right, so again, it's about consistency and say it with me, efficiency. Pause the video, practice this, get it down, get your styles down, share it with your team, and soon enough, you will be rocking and rolling with all of your different projects, executing flawlessly and efficiently. See you in the next lesson. In this lesson, we are going to continue on with our Magic Wand Tool demo, but we're going to talk specifically about um, mouse options. In our previous lesson in the series, we did talk a little bit about how we can work with our mouse and change the size and change the different types of mouse. So we're going to continue on from there, but we're going to maybe go a little bit more deep and sophisticated with this lesson. Now, some of these slides have mouse movements in them. How do I know that? When I recorded this, right, using my screen recorder, I said, listen, I want to record the mouse movements. Verification of the fact that it has mouse movements on here is this little mouse icon there, right? Across the board, you'll see it, mouse, mouse, mouse. Okay, and you can see, if I were to click on this now, here's a little mouse movement that's happening right there. Click on that, there's one right there. Bam, just like that. You'll also notice that within the timeline, I also have a little mouse thing right there, and you can see when the mouse is actually coming in, when it's going to leave, right? Click on that, and you can see that. Now, some of these things you might want to change, right? So as an example, you might want to have control over what the mouse is going to even fact look like, all right? So when I click on this layer, mouse, I want you to notice now I have properties for that mouse, and you can see that maybe it's going to be a slightly different thing. And this one just happens to look like the magic wand, right? Do I want that? Probably not, just a coincidence. But notice here is one that looks like a little hand. Okay, all right. Or maybe I want to do it like an arrow. Okay, but guess what? I've got some other things kind of hiding over here, depending on what you are trying to communicate, right? Maybe you're doing some of these little resize things, moving or moving around. If you're doing like Excel, you know, you're resizing the pane. You just really want to communicate. This is what people are going to be seeing on the screen. Okay, so it's really nice to give you lots and lots of options. All right. Another thing you may want to do is change the size. So I'm going to go over here to double the mouse size, right? Making it a lot easier for people to see. Great, can't mistake that. So turn that off, turn that on, right? It's probably even more than double the mouse size, right? So I like that, pretty cool, pretty happy with that. Then you also have this straight pointer path. What is my pointer path, right? So if we zoom in a little bit, you'll see this little sort of blue set of arrows, and then you see this little kind of red thing happening there. That's my pointer path. What I'm gonna do right now is manipulate this. I'm gonna go right on top of where that red part is here, and I'm going to bring this down. Because now I'm able to control where the mouse is coming from, right? So if I undo that, let's take a look at it in preview mode. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and say next five slides, and I want you to see what's gonna happen, right? After about, about a second, it's gonna come in, and then it does that, okay? And then from my viewers, I've gotten feedback that, you know what, I don't even really see where that mouse is coming from. It's really sort of coming out of nowhere. So I wanna kind of give them a little bit of kind of ramp up time. So I'm gonna actually come down here, right? And I'm also gonna make this start a little earlier, okay? So this is a little bit of timeline basics. You can go and review the last video in our series if you want, see how we can actually make this come in a little sooner. Right, and then so I'm able to do this. Now, this option here is to straighten the pointer path. So let's just go ahead and see what it looks like now. Non-straightened, but moved, hitting F10 on my keyboard. Bam, there that comes in. Very graceful, okay, like that, kind of nice. All right, let's get out of this, All right? Or I might actually wanna make it so it's going to be a straighten path and you can see all right you know what don't waste people's time you don't need to baby or spoon feed them let's see what this one's going to look like it's going to go straight through wait for it and then bam it's just going straight through okay totally up to you how you want to do it and there's another mouse movement there's another mouse movement etc okay so 
really up to you how you want to do this. I'm going to turn that off. I kind of like that sort of graceful little slope that happens there. Let's take a look at some of our other options. Reduce speed before click. Another really nice and I think a considerate type of educational technique that someone might see the mouse and they're like, oh, whoa, I didn't see that coming. And then it slows down, gives you time to sort of process what you're about to see. All right, good. Then you have the mouse click sound. Do you want to have a mouse click sound? Yeah, it's some nice feedback. So I know that so I can see it. I can hear it. That really helps the learner sort of have a kind of a more well-rounded experience around it. OK, is it going to be a single click or a double click? Totally up to you. Then we have some show mouse click options. OK, so this is the default entry. Then you also have a custom entry. So let's just go ahead and take a look at that one. F10. Let's see what this is going to do. When it finally clicks, let's just see how it shows it. OK, so very subtle, right? It didn't do a whole lot, and which is fine. You know, maybe you don't need that much, but let's just see what options we have in terms of the color. You can choose that or you can go to custom. So I choose that and you're going to see how I have these six different kind of like animations that will happen. So for this one, I'm going to choose what's going to look good with this kind of background of my yellow and my red. I'm going to just make this a green ring. And if I don't know what that's going to look like, I can actually preview it by coming over to here and we'll see what that's going to look like. Oh, OK, that's kind of neat. What about another one? Let's go ahead and just say blue circle. Oh, OK. Yeah, maybe I like that one. So now now that we've kind of got this going on, let's go ahead and hit F10. And let's preview it. Wait for it. Bam. See that? And that was nice. It gave me a little bit of feedback and kind of fun, a little more visually engaging. All right. So really nice the fact that we can do that. All right. Now, a few other things to know about mouse stuff is that if you were to click on this mouse icon, you're actually going to get a lot of options here also that you may want to be working with, right? You can see here is align to next slide. Like, oh, well, what happens here? Let's just say, for example, something got moved or something like that, right? You can align it so it makes it actually goes and it stays with the next slide. Like if things just kind of got a little bumped or something like that, you can make it so it's going to align. In this case, we don't need to, but just nice to know that that's there. All right. Here's the option to straighten, same way as we saw before. Now, sometimes, you don't want to show the mouse, right? So if I click on this now, notice the mouse goes away. Maybe that's not what you care about. You're just basically saying, hey, click on this, but you're not showing the mouse movement. So if I hit F10 right now, you're going to see you're just going to show my little highlight box, right? And then maybe your voiceover comes on and says, click on this, da, 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 da. Okay, now click on, da, da, okay, here's the mouse movement. But I said, yo, you know what? I don't want that for this guy either. So I click on this, looks like a right click, it's just a regular left click, and I can say, don't show the mouse, okay? But I can very easily bring that back too, right? But where, where is my option there? Oh, look at that, I right click and there's mouse, <gasps> show mouse. Oh, good, didn't just go away for good. I right click, mouse, and then, ah, okay, good. That's better, okay. So it really all depends on what you wanna do, okay? So really nice good options there. Okay. And now I'm just going to go ahead and choose this last one. Use the current mouse pointer for all slides. Okay. And you're going to see it does kind of like sort of what you hope it to do, but not entirely. Okay. And don't blame me. This is a captivate situation. And the mouse that it's chosen is just essentially this little arrow thing here. It didn't make it bigger, but it did make it so it's the arrow. So as an example, I'm going to go ahead and change this to be the hand, okay? And then regardless of the size, if I choose this now, use current mouse pointer for all slides, it will change it to the hand, but it doesn't change it for the size, right? So just keep that in mind. You'll have to do a little bit of that extra stuff, but it does make everything become the hand though, which is really kind of nice, pretty helpful, okay? Now, let's say you wanted to show mouse movements, but you did not actually do any screen recording. So therefore, there was no mouse movements to show. 
you can actually bring in your own custom mouse movements. So let's just say as you know, part of my sort of, you know, presentation, I actually wanted to show people, bam, how to use the magic wand tool. And I want to kind of have it move in there. And then maybe this time I'll actually will show that little magic wand, you know, coming in there, right? Whatever you want to do to kind of trick it out a little bit. So how can I insert a new mouse movement? Very simply, we're going to go over to here to modify. It's a little bit of an odd place to put it, but you can see here is modify. Here is mouse, and we're going to say show mouse. Even though there was not a mouse movement to record, we're still kind of like showing the mouse, if you will, right? And you'll see here, same thing. I can now say where I want it to start and then where I want it to end. Okay, and then I can actually make it do this and I can double it. Like, oh, that's kind of fun. So maybe I'm kind of just experimenting with it kind of being again, a little more sort of visual in my communication to show this movement, okay? And once again, this mouse did not exist. I did not record it. I am bringing this in. For you, it might be a little bit of a different thing where you're just showing people instructionally how to click on things, how to work with things. Bam, you didn't do any screen recording, but you're kind of creating the illusion as if you did, okay? So now let's preview this, and we're gonna see how to use the magic wand tool and then just watch it come in nice there you go cool yep and then it starts off from there okay so pretty cool lots of good stuff to work with there all right so practice that up you might be not be using that currently but practice up on what we have here for you to work with and see how easy it is to work with your mouse movements from screen recordings as well as ones from scratch resizing your mouses, changing the timeline, changing the, the different types of mouse movements, where they're coming from, straightening them, doing a double click, doing different color click, right? All kinds of great options to work with. All right, practice, pause the video, and we'll see you in a little bit. In this lesson, we are gonna switch up gears in a very different direction and talk about animation. We're going to talk about how we can make objects on our screen kind of move in and out in different directions and different pacing, different timing. All right. Now, if we take a look at a finished version of this, we're going to see here in this Welcome to London slide, we have all these little arrows here, right? We have a green arrow going into a red square, right? And you can see this one's coming from the bottom, going to here, going to there. What exactly is actually happening here. So let's just see when I preview this, you can see I'm just previewing, bam, bam, and bam, right? It starts from one place and then it goes to the other. Let's just preview this actually inside of our player. So let's just say next three slides, because that's pretty much all that's left. All right, let's just see what that's gonna look like and see how that comes in, how that comes in, and that comes in. So that's the kind of thing that we're going to create on some of these other slides, okay? But how is this done? If you click on the object that you want to animate, very simply, you go over here to the properties panel and you go over to here to timing, all right? And you're gonna see that there's gonna be a lot of options here under the effects to make it do what you want it to do. This particular one is easing in right. This particular one is easing in from the top. This one is easing in the bottom, and this one is easing in left. Okay, you'll also see that there's a number of other additional options here for ease percentage and initial alpha and a few other things. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play around with these a little more so we can have them a little more nuanced. All right, now I'm gonna come over here to my timeline so you can see that other things are happening here as well. Now, um, hopefully at this point, we're pretty comfortable with the timeline. And you'll notice that if you're comfortable with the timeline and you've never worked with these little timing effects, you will see that there is something new here, these little triangles. So when you click on that, this is actually telling you that you now have a new timing effect that was not there before, okay? So if we were to go to, for example, this one, notice no little arrows here because there's no movement here. There's no timing or anything like that happening for these to have them move, okay? So let's go ahead and see how we can create this. So I'm just gonna go over to here to, where are you? Oh, might as well just use these guys, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just select this. Okay, let's go over to here down to 
our massage slide and you can notice when I click on it, right? There's not going to be any kind of movement happening here. All right. So what do you want to have happen? I want to actually start making these move. I'm going to do something similar. So very simple. I'm going to go over to here to my timing tab within my properties panel. And you're going to see that within that, I'm going to have this little drop down for the different types of guess what different effects I can work with. And you can see here, it's broken down into different categories, basic emphasis, entrance, exit, and motion path, right? So if I just say entrance, you're going to see, all right, what do you want to do? Ease in left. Okay. That's kind of interesting. Ease in right. Oh, okay. It gives me a nice little preview. All right. Ease in bottom. All right. Well, let's see what else Captivate has in store. Something like this. All right. It's a little bit, not my cup of tea, but you can see doing a variety of different things. No, oh, that's kind of an interesting one. Spiral, but maybe that's that's the look you're looking for. Okay, let's try out some of these. Remember, these are just kind of different entrance ones. Let's just try emphasis. Okay, a little bounce. Okay, a little flicker. Okay, free fall. That could be interesting. Maybe you want to do a little faster, right? So it's really up to you, you know? So make sure it kind of stays professional, but also just make sure that these have a purpose you know, that there's intention around it. Don't just kind of go crazy with it just to kind of show people, you know, animation. Make sure you're doing it with purpose. Many times the purpose is going to be about pacing your content because you kind of want to bring it out one by one. Maybe you've got voiceover coming in and saying, hey, here we're going to have, you know, this amazing type of hot stone massage. And we're going to have shiatsu and then we're going to have Swedish and then bam, it's going to come in one by one as the person is speaking. Okay, but we don't want to overwhelm the users, so therefore we use this type of pacing and you know we kind of show it in such a way that's going to be a little more elegant. All right, so let's go ahead and just choose this one and we go to timing. All right, and then again, if you want to do any of these other ones, we can explore those, right? We're going to probably maybe do a little exit, you know, after this, we just kind of play around with that. All right, so I'm just going to go over here to entrance and I'm going to say ease in right and you can see, all right. That's doing that. And you, there it is. My little green going to red. We'll be able to play around with that to a certain degree in a little bit. Click on this one. Go back over to here to entrance. Okay. What do these guys do? Oh, okay. Yeah. I kind of like that. Very nice. And then look at that. As I'm doing this, notice my little arrows now appear to tell me, okay, there is in fact going to be some type of timing and effects that's going to happen there. All right, and now we got that one. And then let's do one more for this guy here. Entrance, right? Ease in from the top. And click on this one. And then let's just do one completely different now. Let's just say emphasis. And let's just, I don't know, let's do a uh, free fall. Okay, so maybe that's what you want to do. Totally play around wherever you want to do it. You know, it's really up to you. <laughs> okay, now. You're going to see there are going to be different options here. Okay. And there's also going to be different options here. So we're not done yet, but I do want to preview this. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit F10. And you're going to see they're going to come in one by one, right? That one's going to come in. That one's going to come in and notice how they're kind of overlapping. All right. That one's going to kind of come in and bounce away. Obviously we don't want that one at all. So we're going to learn how we can say, listen, I don't want that. Let's override that. Let's change that for something else. So let's do these kind of one by one. I click on this and then you'll notice here is my marble arch 23. I have no idea what that is. Horribly labeled. We'll just say two women. Okay, great. We have that. All right, what's this one? Oh, you know what? That's a hot stone massage. Okay. Oh, okay. You know what? It's, it's really important. We get this down. All right. These are flowers. Okay, so definitely make it so we have some good labeling happening here. Okay, woman reading. Okay, good, fantastic. Now I can actually see it. I know what it's gonna do. All right, so let's come back here. And now let's see the different things that we can do here. All right, so let's take a look, first of all, at this little green arrow here. This is telling me where it is now starting from. Notice how it kind of starts almost kind of like halfway inside of the canvas already, right? You can see it's already starting there. Maybe that's coming in a little too soon. 
So what I want to do now is say, let's, let's start off kind of way over here. So what I'm going to do is hold down my shift key as I click and drag on this, right? And now let's watch it. So that comes in just like that, right? All right, kind of like that. Now, why did I hold down the shift key? Because I wanted to make sure this line stays straight. Shift is usually kind of a perfection thing, you know, perfection thing, right? So held that down. Okay, so maybe I'll do the same thing for this one, right? Let's have it start up here, a little more of a roundup. Same thing for this guy here. All right, now for this one, let's actually remove this animation. How do you remove it? Notice it says here, apply effects list. This is free fall. Nah, not a big fan. Worth experimenting, but don't want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and just say, listen, goodbye. No animation is going to be on this at all. All right, so let's just come back to our old tried and true entrance. And then I just say ease in left. And very good. Now let's just go ahead and have this start off a little bit over there and we're good to go. All right, now let's just preview this and see which ways we can do to kind of improve this. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit F10. All right, and that's okay, but I'm gonna experiment with something called easing. All right, so I'm gonna come over to here and I'm gonna go ahead and make this go ease 100%. And then my initial alpha, what does that mean? If you recall from one of our earlier lessons, earlier in the series, alpha is essentially another word for our transparency. So the initial alpha, it means it's gonna start off invisible, which is probably not what I really need necessarily. So that's just more work for the program. It's gonna make it just kind of a bigger file, if you will, right? So it's just like, hey, you know, that's extra work. So that doesn't necessarily need to be at zero. So I'm just gonna keep it at that, okay? The effect duration, okay? The effect duration essentially is like, how long is it gonna to take to go from here to here, right? It's gonna take two seconds to do that. Right? Maybe you want to change that. So if you click back down here, you'll notice this is also two seconds. That's two seconds. That's the same thing. So if you wanted to change this to three, keep an eye on that pink bar down there. That's going to grow. If you wanted to change that again, maybe you want to make it go a little faster. Go ahead and bring that in. So it takes a second to go just right to there. Okay. So change that to one. Very nice, all right? So let's just see what that's going to do. I'm gonna experiment with it so you can see the differences with our easing and then also with our timing when we experiment with kind of the variations combining them, all right? So let's just take a look at that first one that we have there. It's gonna come in fast. But notice how it kind of like stopped in a more natural way. All right, let's do that one more time. I don't know if you notice that. But let's go ahead and now do a little longer. All right, F10, and keep an eye on how the differences with the easing just kind of looks a little bit more kind of smooth and elegant and graceful. See how it just kind of stops right there? It kind of stops more like a car would stop, where this is more kind of robotic. So I'm going to suggest we do 100% ease for all of these. I can type out 100 if I want to, or just click and drag on that. All right, and if you wanted to, you can experiment. Well, what does that look like with 100% alpha versus the other ones that are at zero? This one is at 100%, but it doesn't really matter because it starts off the side of the main stage anyway. So let's see it go. Watch it. Here it comes. It's visible. That one's visible. Notice how it kind of like comes to a nice graceful stop. Big difference when you're working with your easing, okay? So you wanna play around with that, all right? Now, some other ones you may wanna consider doing is working with your exit, okay? So what I'm gonna show you here is not only a new kind of animation, but you may wanna actually have it so you have animation on one object that's gonna have more than one time of animation. Okay, let me say that a little bit better. <laughs> so in other words, you can have multiple animations on one object, okay? So let's just say, I want this one to come in and then I want it to leave, okay? Kind of the same way it came in. 
All right, that's gonna be kind of a nice little effect here. So I have my two women right there. And then I'm gonna add on a new animation. See, there it is right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the plus sign. And this time I'm gonna say exit. All right, and which way do I want it to exit? It's gonna go ahead and say ease out left. Now, those of you who are keen observers probably see now, I have two little pink boxes here. Here's my ease out left, here's my ease out right, but they're conflicting with each other, right? They're fighting over the timeline because they're coming in at the same time. So it's a really easy fix. Just go ahead and drag this over because it's part of its own timeline now. And then I'm gonna have that, just only do it for the last maybe like second or so. So then it's actually gonna leave. So it's gonna show up here, and it's gonna be up there visible for about what, one, two, three seconds, and then it's gonna leave. All right, and you can mess with the easing if you want to, totally up to you, right? But we won't be able to see it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. The final alpha is gonna be zero, so when it fades, it's gonna fade into invisibility, right? So kind of neat. So let's just see what this is gonna do. Just keep your eye on that first image. comes in, you look at it, and then it goes away. Okay, so you really have that kind of control. So let's just do one more so you can see this, right? I'll do it for this guy here, and then we're gonna have it maybe just go down this time. So I'm gonna add on a new animation for this one, right? I'm gonna go to exit, and then I'm gonna have to ease out to the bottom, right? And then this one, I've actually gotta go a kind of a, a little further with this guy here because I want you to notice again, here's my ease out bottom, right? It's gonna leave at the same exact time, but I need it to actually really, really kind of go, right? Because I don't even know where it's gonna to go to. So it's very important you keep an eye on these because it's like, well, where are you going to? Same thing for this guy, right? It's like, okay, well, where's this going to? Okay, so we need to make sure that we're selecting on the right thing here, right? And then that's gonna go where it's gonna go. All right, so we have to actually go right, right to it, okay? So let's now just at least play around with this one so we can see now what's that gonna look like, all right? So we're gonna ease that out. I'm gonna say, all right, go up to 100. And now, let's just look at those first two. I don't think we need to keep going after that. Let's just see, it's coming in and watch them both leave at the same time, cool. So maybe that's like a little kind of a little sizzle reel you're doing. Go bam, 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 just coming in, going out, coming in, going out, whatever, right? They need to study it necessarily. All right, so really slick. This can be done with any kind of object, not just images. It can be text, right? It can be all kinds of different, you know, bullets or something that you're working with. You know, again, it's about timing of your content, pacing it out, but it could also be for visual interest. Like I said, kind of a sizzle reel, just things kind of popping in, flying out. And maybe you're doing something a little bit more kind of exotic, right? Like having it kind of bounce, right? Or whatever you're doing. But just know how things work in terms of our layers within our timeline and understand how we can add on more than one type of, of animation. And you can ease in, ease out, do all kinds of fun stuff. All right. So go ahead and pause the video, practice this. Okay, and then just make sure you use it with intention and purpose. Don't overuse this, it can be very easily overused. Okay, but just make sure you're using it with kind of good design in mind. And we'll see you in the next lesson. And welcome back everybody. We are now going to talk about working with PowerPoint. I know that we are currently working with Captivate, but we are going to explore this option because many of you are working with recycled PowerPoints and you don't wanna to toss away all your old work and have to do it all over again. So how do we bring in PowerPoint slides into previously existing Captivate files? Or how do we create a Captivate file based off of a PowerPoint and that's it entirely? Okay, so we have a few different options we can work with. Then after we bring it in, let's say we wanna make edits and it's linked up to that PowerPoint. How do we work with all that, right? So we've got a number of different options to work with here. So let's just say I have just a previously existing file right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and call this 
rate of return. Okay, and this is going to be a rate of return and call this cap for Captivate. And this already exists and I know I've got a ton of PowerPoint stuff that I want to bring into this. So what I'm going to do is go over here to my plus sign for slides and very simply just say, hey, listen, I want to bring in a PowerPoint slide. So it's going to tell me here, okay, so insert slides and insert after the selected slide below. It's like, okay, yeah, that's fine. And then it's going to ask me, well, what actually is the file that you want to bring in? And you can see here I have a rate of return .pptx file. Okay, good idea to be working with the latest and greatest version of PowerPoint if possible, namely having the extension be the pptx. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and double click on that. What are you going to see? It's parsing, it's processing, it's doing all kinds of wonderful things. A lot of magic happening in the background. Could take a little while. So I'm just going to keep talking to kind of stall and pause all this until it now finally pops up. And you're going to see now I'm looking at 22 slides, everything that's in this PowerPoint. OK, so what do I want to bring in? So, um, uh, well, you know what? I actually want to bring in very few of these. So I'm going to go ahead and clear all. Notice how these check marks now go away. And I'm going to say, yes, I want this one. I want this one. I want that one. All right. And then that one's pretty good. Right. And we'll just keep it at that for right now. Then it's going to ask me, all right, so how do you want these to advance? Do you want them to advance on a mouse click or do you want them to advance automatically? My suggestion for you is to choose automatically because automatically is going to give us the ability to then have some more manual control over it. If you choose mouse click, it's going to create this interaction of a clickable kind of like invisible film over the whole thing. And you're going to have to remove those, right? So it's a little bit confusing when you actually do it. So there's going to be a little option to be able to do that, right? So let's now go ahead and we're going to say, like I said, from my drop down here, we're going to say automatically. And then I want to have high fidelity, meaning high quality. I do want them to be linked up, right? Meaning that if they make changes here, I want it to actually show up here as well. And then slide duration, whatever we have as the slide duration inside of PowerPoint, I want it to show also within Captivate. All right, so let's go ahead and click OK. Let's wait for it to parse and process. And very soon, you're going to see we're going to have one, two, three, four additional slides there. And again, this could take a little bit of time. It's doing some pretty magical stuff. And then it starts to pick up speed and momentum after a little while. But of course, that could take more time depending on more slides you got. Now it's giving me a little bit of a warning and saying, hey, the height and width of the Microsoft PowerPoint presentation and the chosen Captivate project are not the same. This might affect the resolution of the imported slides and Captivate, but the quality is largely regained on publishing. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And just like that, now I have them in here and I really didn't lose anything at all. Now, just one little tip for you in case things are a little bit funky and you want to be able to work with a little bit better in terms of the, the size and scaling and all that. If you go over to here to modify and choose rescale project, you can then reset it to be whatever the, the resolution and aspect ratio that you want it to be. All right, let me go ahead and cancel that out. Now, let's go over to here to this slide and you're going to see there it is. Now, if I try to make edits to this, I won't be able to do it. Come over to here, can't do it, right? So what I need to do is actually make edits to the PowerPoint in order to make this work. Now, before we make those edits, let's talk a little bit about the library. So if we come over to here, you'll notice here is the library right next to properties. And within the library, we're going to see a number of different categories like our audio, which we're going to get to in a little bit. If we have images, right, if we have video, but we also have something called presentations. OK, now here you have a presentation called rate of return. Now, you'll also note that on the right hand side, I have this little green circle. I move my mouse over. It's telling me that it is in sync with the source, meaning that no changes have been made 
to the source. So therefore, everything is hunky dory, no problems at all. But let's say I make some changes to it. So I'm going to go ahead and make changes to my PowerPoint. Go to rate of return. And I'm going to go ahead and just make some changes to this. All right. So I just know that, you know what, we're actually going to remove this. Okay. And then maybe I'm going to move this guy up a little bit and also make him bigger, right? Just like that. Okay. And that this one also, this is going to say risk tolerance levels. Okay. Or just level. Okay. Good. Super happy about that. Right. And then maybe that's all I'm going to do for right now, but it could be, you know, any of these other things you want to do as well. You know, maybe I'm going to make this and just go a little bit more kind of extreme, really test it out. Green. Okay. Excellent. Now that is saving, right? I'm going to go ahead and just take care of that. I close out of this. And now I want you to notice what's going to happen. This guys get all sync up with each other. Right, I come over to here and then guess what? None of these changes are actually happening, right? Okay, all right. So what's going on here? I don't see that happening, that happening. But now I'm gonna come over to here and then notice how this turns red. And now watch this, let's keep an eye on, like this one's a good example. You move your mouse over that little red ball, it's saying not in sync with the source. And all we gotta do, is click on it to update. So watch this and keep your eye on all three slides. Click on that. It's now syncing up. I didn't even really do anything there, right? Just so you know, right? It just kind of said, hey, where's that PowerPoint file this guy's been working with? Let's go ahead and bring that up and let's just refresh it. It's doing its thing. It's finding it and it's updating just as the caption says. So we're going to wait patiently while I'll captivate and PowerPoint, have a little discussion, shake some hands, negotiate some treaties, and wait for everything to get up to date. And this is very good if you're working on a team that you are the developer, you're working in Captivate, somebody else is working in PowerPoint, you can still have all these things sync up with each other that your other person who's in Tallahassee, you're in Tacoma, and all of a sudden, bam, those changes are made. You see a little red circle. And then you say, oh, you know what? We should probably update that. And it's going to come in seamlessly. All right. So let's just wait. This could take some time, but that 10% will just jump up in no time. And we're back. And we have our little green circle there. And let's check it out. That's bigger. And... There's our coup de gras. There we go. We have different colors and it actually says risk tolerance level. Okay. So very cool. Now let's see this as an actual presentation. So we know that this, in fact, even though it looks a little grainy here, this in fact will show and play quite nicely. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit F4. That's going to be playing the entire presentation there. And let's go ahead and run that. Okay, that's nice and clean. Of course, that's my text. And then look at that beautiful PowerPoint. I'm going to go into the next one. This is animation that I have there. I brought that in. Good, more animation there. Now, additionally, you could also go directly from Captivate to do that. Just to show you this here, you go to edit and then edit with Microsoft PowerPoint. And then you can go ahead and just edit the presentation or edit individual slides if you want to. And then it's going to open up to another window to be able to pretty much do the same thing. So you have choices. You can do it directly from Captivate, save your changes because a kind of a ghost version of PowerPoint will open up. Or you can do it directly in PowerPoint, save your changes, and then come back over here to your library and then click on your little red circle when that appears and then bam, it will update. Okay, it might take a little while, but you can see how easy this is, right? How seamless it is to work with PowerPoint and Captivate. Now, keep in mind that this is a hybrid, okay? So I could very easily now just still insert all kinds of different slides here, right? So you can see I can still work with, you know, my PowerPoint and a regular slide here, right? See all these things now kind of work in harmony with each other. So it's really, really nice. All right, now 
Let's switch up gears a little bit, kind of still talking about the same topic. All right, let's just do another one. I'm gonna go ahead and say file, new project. And this time it's gonna be a new project from PowerPoint. Okay, so let me go ahead and just close this out. Because what we did is earlier, we had a currently existing project, but this time it's gonna be a new project that's going to be from PowerPoint. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing. And bam, this is starting from scratch, right? Just to make the distinction. And you're gonna see that we're gonna get a very similar dialog box here. Okay, and you're gonna see, I'm gonna go ahead and say clear all. And this time maybe let's do something a little bit different. Let's go ahead and get these guys here. All right, and maybe just one more for good luck here. Okay, that's great. And then high fidelity. Yes, do we wanna do an on mouse click? Nope, I'm gonna say automatically. Slide duration, have it come in just as is, but of course I can make it my own if I like. And then click OK, wait for it to come up. And again, this could take some time, so be patient. There's a lot of science and technology happening in the background. We are grateful, so we are patient. And when this is done, you're gonna have a brand new one. Okay, you can see, bam, here it is. Great, fantastic. All right, let's go ahead and just make this. All right, excellent. And you know what? This maybe needs to be up here. So just the same way I can play around with these. And same way I can do a whole bunch of other things that I wanted to on this suit. Copy, duplicate, delete. I can even add on a mouse onto this. I can add audio onto this. Okay, and then here's my option to edit with PowerPoint if I wanted to. And just the same, I can go over to my library and you're gonna see, look at that. There it is, right? Different presentation altogether, but same type of interface where I can see it in my library and I can make changes to it here on the fly or go directly to the source and make those changes, okay? So super, super easy to do, really powerful, very valuable. All right, so pause the video, bring in some PowerPoints that you wanna work with. I'll bring in parts of it, bring in all of it, make some edits, how easy it is and how seamless it is to work with the two different programs together. We'll see you in the next lesson. And welcome back everybody. In this next few set of lessons, we are gonna discuss audio in your presentations. Now audio can come in a couple of different formats. It could be a WAV file, it can be an MP3 file. You can also import audio into the background of your whole project. So it's just running pervasively like music. You just kind of want it to be in the background, kind of give people a little beat, you know, something like that, a little momentum. But you can also have audio that let's just say text comes in and each time the person is reading what's on the screen, there's also a narrator that's coming in to say the same text that's on the screen. Okay, and you can bring in all that text piecemeal, meaning that one slide after the other, or you might want to do it so it just kind of goes throughout the entire slide deck. All right, so we got lots and lots of options here, okay, including the ability to even edit your audio. So we're going to break up this series of lessons into all those different components, okay? So the first thing we're going to talk about is working with background audio. So if I play this currently, I'm going to go ahead and launch this now. You will not hear any audio at all. And what I'd like to do is have a nice little background audio. So I'm going to go ahead and play this. And if I play it, there's nothing there, right? And which is fine. You know, maybe that's what you want. But other times you might just want to have a little bit of, you know, background music for just entertainment purposes, right? Just for kind of energy, morale, you know, engagement. All right. So that's what we're going to do here is we're going to work with bringing in our audio from the background or into the background. So how do we do that? I want you to notice here is an audio tab right up here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say import to, and guess what? I have objects, slide, and background options I can import my audio to, okay? So we're just gonna say import to background. And I'm gonna go here to our class folder. You notice so you have images and assets, and then here is audio. And you have lots to work with here if you want to experiment. So we've got a few different background audio, right? Background music, right? We have another one we can work with. But just notice here that some of these are MP3s and one of these is a WAV file. Okay, so let me just go ahead and experiment now. I'm just going to go ahead and just double click on this. And as soon as you bring it in, 
you're able to actually sample it and potentially even do a little bit of light editing on this, right? So let's just see what is this going to sound like before I commit to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. Okay, I can pause it. Okay, and that's it, right? So it's like, yeah, well, you know, it's actually really not that long. So I don't even really know if I want that. So let's try that another way, right? So I'm gonna go over here to import to background. Okay, are you sure you wanna change the background? Yes, so it's gonna override it. Let's try a different one. Same process. Okay, a little more kind of ethereal. And you can see here, this is 32 seconds long. Okay, and then I might want to have that loop. All right, has some a little bit of variety happening there. Let's maybe try another one. Say yes. All right, how about this background music? Oh, it seems like it's going to be a little bit bigger. And you can tell before you bring it in as well from your file manager. So this is probably going to be a longer audio file. All right, let's play this one. And just like how you can do with your timeline, I can hit the space bar on my keyboard. Okay, kind of a little, little ominous. Okay, so it's up to you. You have these to choose from, okay? Let's maybe just go one more and let's try background four. Okay, very good. So I'm gonna choose that one. Now, now that I have decided, okay, this is what I like, let's just see what this dialog box is going to do for me. All right, so first thing is, I want you to notice, obviously we can play and pause it, right? And of course we can use our space bar to play and pause it as well. Down below, you're gonna see these options to fade in and fade out. Maybe I want it to fade in nice and slowly, right? So just like two seconds, it's gonna be a very gradual, fade in, so I'll just make that to two seconds. And I don't want it to fade out at this point, right? We're gonna try it out, because it's gonna be about 17 seconds, and then we want it to kind of blend right into the next one. But it's up to you, right? And then do you want it to loop over and over again? Yes, right, because my project is much longer than 17 seconds, so I want it to loop. Stop the audio at the end of the project. I definitely want that. I don't want it to continue going when my project is over. Right, so um, just kind of just have the audio stop just the same. Now this one is quite important. Adjust the background audio, which is what we're looking at here. Adjusting background audio volume on slides with audio. So let's say I'm gonna have another bit of audio on this slide that's not the background music, but it's gonna say, hey, Welcome to this presentation on safety in the workplace, right? And I'm talking about that, right? And I'm gonna say, in this presentation, you're gonna learn this and this and this and that. Okay, great. Now, this background audio might interfere with that. So what you'll wanna do is kind of duck this, right? So I would probably wanna bring this down to like 15% is a good number to start with. So it's actually gonna get 15% lower in its volume, okay? So great. I'm good there, right? So once I've done all of these things here, I'm gonna go ahead and just say save and then close it. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and present this, hit F10. Play it. Lovely, and there's my music. Now I'm gonna go to the next slide and notice how it's still fluid. It continues to go next one and next one and next one. Okay, let's get out of that. All right, because that is background audio. Now, let's just go a little bit under the hood now where we can actually see where some of our audio elements are. Okay, so we're gonna go a little deeper into this audio tab up, up here. And we're gonna go down to audio management. And you're gonna see here that there's actually quite a bit of slides for us to work with, right? And none of them, actually have any audio on them, right? So this is pretty great to know that you can see, all right, you know, I got a lot of slides. Is there audio on any of this? Nope. However, if you scroll way down to the bottom, notice here is there is 
audio on the background, right? And it gives me all kinds of different specs about this, right? The duration of it, are we fading in, right? Are we fading out? How, what the size of it is, et cetera, all kinds of good stuff here. If you wanted to export this, especially if you made some edits to it, you can do that, right? So it's kind of nice if you want to share that with other people, bam, you've got that there. Let's say you, you lose the file at some point, you can always export that, all right? Now you'll also see you can update it in case maybe the file has changed a little bit. It'll update it and resync. Okay. This one right here, if you click on that, that's going to allow you to then actually do some edits, which is really nice. We're going to learn all about editing in an upcoming lesson on audio, but you can see edit is readily available to us. Let's go ahead and close this out. All right. And then at some point, you may want to actually print all of these out because maybe you're kind of talking to your designers, you're talking to your voice talent, you're talking to your music department, and you just need to see what slide has what and for how long and do all that other good stuff there. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm just going to go ahead and just say, okay. And the next thing I want to talk about is your library in another context, right? So if we go over to here to our library, you're going to see now how I have this audio part right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on this and we'll be able to listen to it. Okay, that's one that I brought in. Another that I brought in. Another. And another. Wow, how interesting is that? Okay, the fact that I brought them in at any time at all Captivate still remembers it. It has it there in the background, so I don't have to do that again. So in the future, if you ever want to use any of these ones that you brought in, it's still in the library, okay? Now, check it out. I also have the ability to right click and do all kinds of different things with it. If you wanted to edit it, if you want to export, if you want to delete it, rename it, duplicate it, do all kinds of different things directly from the library, okay? So really, really helpful stuff here, okay? So just know how it all kind of comes together from this audio tab up on top here. We imported it, right? And then once we imported it, we're able to go over to our audio management and we'll be able to see it down below. We have all kinds of different options here. And we also have options within our library to then work with our audio file in whatever way you want to do it, right? So in terms of playing it, renaming it, deleting it, doing all kinds of good stuff here, including all the other ones that we tried that we decided to reject. Okay, so background audio, I think pretty important, definitely worth adding something on there. There's lots of places to get background um, music or whatever it is. If you want to get it from Adobe Stock, you can do that. Um, Getty Images actually has some royalty free types of audio that you can explore, but there's lots of stuff out there that um, you can see what's available. All right, so go ahead and pause the video, practice bringing in and maybe doing a little bit of editing and you know some organization around your audio. And continuing on with our discussion about audio, let's now do some recording of our own audio. So you may want to do some recording slide by slide as you're looking at your slides, whether it's going to be what we call scratch audio because you're gonna be working with voice talent or you might actually be the voice talent and you're gonna be recording the audio on the fly as you work with your slides, as you work with your production. Okay, now a good little tip that I recommend you do is you actually have some notes or a script all ready for you. Okay, now Captivate provides a really nice tool to be able to do that. So if I go over to here to window, I want you to notice here is this option for slide notes. And you'll notice that the timeline now gets kind of split up into two. All right, so for this particular slide, I want to have some notes. Essentially, it's going to be my script for this. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my little plus sign. And I'm just going to say, welcome to the lesson on safety in the work place. We will learn all about how to stay safe on the job. Okay, we're just keeping it simple here. All right, click away. And now that is all ready to go for when I start to do my recording. Okay, so you'll see that in just a little bit, but I think it's important for us to understand that this is available for us, how we get there. Okay, again, from window, 
and you can see here is slide notes, right? If that goes away, don't worry about it. You can always bring it back Go over to here to slide notes and then bam, there it is. Now keep in mind that every slide is going to have its own little area for notes, right? So depending on how you're doing this, okay? So if you're going to be just doing slide by slide, you want to have notes available there, you can absolutely do that. All right. Now let's just see this in action. So I am ready to go. I'm ready to do my recording. And I'm just going to go ahead and just say, okay, let's just say record. And then what I'd like to do is start my recording. Okay. But a few things I got to do, all right. First of all, take a look at your device, right? You can see here it's okay. Well, which device are you using and make sure it's calibrated. So when you click on that, you're going to want to make sure it's all good and all ready to go calibrate input. Okay. So go and say auto calibrate and it's listening to me. That's great. Fantastic. Stop calibration. Okay. Record. Okay. And then I'm testing, 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 fantastic testing. It can pick up on me. That's great. All right. And I'm good to go. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and click okay. And now I click okay and it's pretty much good to go, right? So at this point, you're probably already clear that it's working. This might be an optional step for you, especially if you see the name of your microphone there, but at least I know that the recording is going to happen. The fact that you can hear me right now means that my microphone is working, all right? But also the fact that you saw those little lines there. Okay, now, before I start going into just recording, which is gonna be this red circle right there, I wanna do a couple of other things. First of all, I'm gonna click on preview. And guess what I'm going to preview? The current slide that I'm on. All right. And this is actually really important if you're going to have a step by step type of recording that you want to make sure that your timing is right. Because as I am recording my voice, I might want to see what's on the slide. So as my animation pops up, da -da -da -da, here's step one and here's step two and here's step three. So I am now speaking in sync with what I'm seeing here in my preview. Okay, so keeping that in mind that this preview can be very, very valuable for you. Now let's come down here to our captions and slide notes. Remember we just did that a few minutes ago, right? So let's go to here and then guess what's waiting there for me. So I don't need any kind of shuffling piece of paper in the background. I have this right there for me to cheat, okay? Which is kind of nice. Also I have the option to make this nice and big so I can really, really see it. Okay. Okay. That's fantastic. And this is going to kind of hang out here and sort of be floating as I click on this record, right? So it's really nice, very smart, very considerate for us as developers and us as voice talent, if we are the ones doing this. Okay. So have a cup of water, right? Clear out your throat, have a little tea, brandy, whatever you're going to do to actually get yourself all set up. You might also want to rehearse a little bit. Welcome to the lesson on safety in the workplace. We will learn all about how to stay safe on the job. Good. Okay. Got it right on the first time. For some of us, we're not used to doing this. Okay. So you might want to rehearse this before you do the recording. Okay. All right. So here we go. Click on record. Three, two, one. You get the countdown. Welcome to the lesson on safety in the workplace. We will learn all about how to stay safe on the job. And then there is my stop. And you can see, bam, there is my recording comes in. I click OK. I can now listen to it. Welcome, Welcome to the lesson on safety in the workplace. We will learn all about how to stay safe on the job. OK, good. And you can see it maybe got a little some of my clicks in there, right? I got my little <gasps> in there. We're going to be able to actually edit a lot of those things out in just a little bit. But for right now, let's just say I'm happy with that. OK, and I'll just go to do it one more time. Welcome to the lesson on safety. OK. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just say, save. Do you want to extend the display time to 7.7 .7 seconds to match the new audio? Oh, yes, I certainly do. Thanks for asking me that. Okay, I'm gonna click close. All right, now let's go to our timeline. I want you to notice that there is now a new layer within my timeline. Let's go over here to my library. Okay, and you're gonna see here is recording one. Okay, I don't really like how that's named. So let's right click on that, rename that. All right, I'm gonna call this slide one audio. All right, and it does not sync up here, but that's okay. Maybe if I drag this over here, we'll do that. 
say okay there you go good and we're going to go over what that little dialog box in just a little bit but it doesn't actually sync up with it so i just dragged it back over here but my audio should be the same so let's go ahead and play just this slide hitting the welcome space bar. to the lesson on safety in the workplace we will learn all about how to stay safe on the job okay very good so I'm pretty happy with that, right? And again, this may just be your scratch audio because in the next lesson, what we're going to talk about is giving people the ability to bring in audio from the outside, meaning you're working with voice talent and then they're doing all of the recording, right? Professionally in a soundproof room and all that good stuff. And they send you all of these MP3 files or WAV files, and then you import them that way. Okay. But for right now, right? This is a really important lesson on how to just do the recording on your own, because maybe this is ultimately your final production level, or you just want to show your voice talent, bam, this is how we want it to sound. I'm working on the pacing, but I don't have a good voice, but I did write the script. So I know this is how the tone should sound. So I'm working on this. Then I send it off to them. They view this. Then they're the ones with the voice or they're the ones with the acting abilities. And then they're the ones who will then create the final audio. And that's what we're gonna do next to import audio from the outside, okay? Now, keep in mind, okay, that we have the same ability with our audio tab here to go over here to our audio management and let's scroll up to the top and I want you to notice, look at this, here is start course and now there is something available here within slide one and all of the information around slide one give me the ability to welcome to the lesson on play it and stop it right export it edit it do all kinds of good things with it right closed caption we'll talk about in a subsequent series of lessons okay but lots of good stuff here okay so it comes back full circle same way as what we did with our background audio okay so keeping all that stuff in mind it's a pretty feature rich series of organization that we can do with our audio all right so let's just go ahead and click okay and I'm pretty much good to go. So practice that. You can use my audio if you want to, or I highly, highly recommend using your own. Using my audio is pretty much gonna be what we're gonna do in the next lesson. You're gonna to wanna to practice doing your own recording, okay? If this is something you're gonna plan on doing in the future. All right, we'll see you in the next lesson. In this lesson on audio, we're going to import our audio from another file. The last lesson, what we did we actually recorded it here on the fly using our record option right there. So what I'm gonna do just for, so you can understand that you can do this, but also just for purposes of our lesson, it's actually gonna remove this altogether. So you can see here is down with slide one audio, right click, and you can see here's the option to remove. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and remove that and say yes, I am sure about it, and it's gone. Okay, but keep in mind, it's still here. If I ever wanna use it again, I can drag that in there, do whatever you wanna do right? Super easy. Don't worry about it just because you removed it from your timeline. All right. So I already have audio that exists. And recall, this is audio that I work with my voice talent on, right? We paid a lot of money, right? They did it in a studio. It sounds great. It's clean, right? And they did it for every single slide. Okay. Now you have to ask yourself, what type of kind of format do you want to do this in? Meaning, do you want your voice talent to record per slide one by one, or do you want them to record one big fluid, one audio document, or excuse me, one audio file, and then it just goes all the way through? My suggestion is that you do it slide by slide, right? So in this case, if you have audio on every single one of these, you'd have 31 bits of audio, right? You'd actually have 31 audio files, okay? It's gonna just make it a lot easier to organize ultimately. I'm just going to show you how to do one just so you can see how it works. It's pretty much going to be rinse and repeat for all of them. Okay, so currently I have no audio on here. I am not going to be doing recording because my voice is not the voice talent. Someone else is. So what do I do? Very simply, go over here to audio and we're going to say import to and we're going to say import to slide. And you can see, all right, there is all my audio right here. And then here is my how to stay safe intro audio. So now I'm gonna double click on that. And you're gonna see, I get this very kind of lengthy sort of tome of audio import options that come up, right? That flashed up earlier and I told you we would talk about it and this is when we're gonna talk about it. They give you three ways that you can import your audio. 
And this comes back to this discussion of what is that format you want to do. So let's just go ahead and read this. First choice is show the slide for the same amount of time as the length of the audio. Remember earlier how it gave me the choice and said, hey, do you want to bring this up to 7.7 .7 seconds, whatever? Because the audio was kind of the boss. The audio was governing how long the whole slide will be visually. So you can see your note, the entire audio is added to the selected slide. If the audio duration is greater than the slide duration, the slide duration is increased. And that's what happened with us before. Because before it was only like a three seconds or whatever, and we just increased it to the seven seconds. Great. And this is actually what I'm going to end up doing. But just notice what my other options are in case you want to go further with this. Distribute the audio file over several slides. So this is going to be good if you decided that you're just going to do like 20 minutes of recording and then it's going to allow you to distribute it over time. Okay. Now what happens here is the entire audio is added to the selected slides. Captivate then opens the audio timing dialog box where you can change the timing and distribute the audio file over other slides. The onus is on you at that point. Then you'll need to actually kind of like sort of dissect it according to slide two start started at nine seconds slide three started at 14 seconds okay so it's really up to you some people use other programs like audacity to do this ahead of time right or maybe you have some other audio editing programs like GarageBand or something like that to be able to do that okay we're not going to choose this and then we have this option here retain the current slide duration right meaning we still want it to be three seconds and distribute the audio files over several slides Okay, so it's kind of the opposite as the first one, whereas the visuals are the boss, right? They're the ones governing things. Note, current slide duration remains the same, and the audio file is automatically distributed across the following slides based on the slide duration and audio duration. Again, my visuals are then going to be the boss. It's going to stay three seconds, but then the audio is going to automatically spill over to the next level, all right, to the next slide. All right, so I'm pretty much good here. I'm going to click OK, and now... Let's go ahead and play it. Welcome to this presentation on safety in the workplace. In this presentation. Okay, so you're going to see here. Yes, it worked. It was successful. And guess what? I have another element here inside of my libraries. Okay, that's the one here. You can see how to stay safe. Intro audio. Okay, let's go back over here to audio. Go to audio management and you can see. Yes, there it is. And notice it's a little bit longer. Okay, and I click OK, and that's the process. Okay, now what you probably notice that there's like a, you know, a throat clearing, there's a sniffle going on in there, and what we're going to do in the next lesson is edit our audio. Okay, so so far we've done background audio, we've recorded our audio to this particular slide, and we now inserted pre-existing audio into our slide. Okay that existed from our voice talent, okay? So what we're gonna do next is learn how to edit our audio. In the last lesson, we imported a pre-existing audio file and that file had a whole bunch of issues, right? Let's go ahead and review that. <clears throat> Welcome to this presentation on safety in the workplace. <laughs> All right, so we've got some throat clearing there. We got some sniffles, right? We got all kinds of stuff even at the end we haven't seen, right? Not great. But the good news is, is that Captivate gives us the ability to make edits very, very easily. Okay, so that's what this lesson is going to be about. Many times you're going to need to edit out, clearing out some things like this, but sometimes maybe you just want to increase the volume, decrease the volume. Okay, maybe you want to kind of flatten some things out, right? You're just basically saying, hey, listen, I don't want that there. And you're not necessarily deleting it, right? That's called silencing. Hey, maybe you're going to cut and paste something, right? Lots and lots of options for you to work with, all right? So if you recall, there's many ways to be able to do some audio editing, okay? So let me just show you one of them. If you right-click right here on our timeline, here is edit. We go over to here to our library. I want you to see here is right-click and then edit, right? You can see edit within Adobe Captivate. Okay, also notice here's a little pencil. All right, and then one we have not talked about is this guy right here, okay? If you just do a regular click on there, notice you can say play, stop, export, edit. Oh, look at that, or even remove, okay? 
So lots of great options pretty much everywhere. You're just going to sort of trip over them. Okay. And this is very similar to what we saw with our mouse movements, right? Where it's like, okay, you can just simply do a regular left click and all these options comes up. So since this, this is a new one, let's go ahead and just use it. Click on edit and you're going to see, wait, there it is. There's all my audio right there. All what? 19 seconds of it. Now, what I'd like to do first of all is explore some of these options up on top. And I'm going to start off with this zoom option because if I zoom in like this, I'm able to actually see all of my audio kind of in one place, right? Or you can really zoom really in, right? This was zooming out, excuse me. This is zooming in. And what's so great about this is that like you can get to like the thousandths of a second right? To really kind of get, what was that little sound that came in, right? A little bird chirping, something like that. Cool. You can get that if you want to, right? So you can really get granular with your editing. Okay. And if you want to see everything kind of all on one page, you can do that here, right? Which is really nice. Okay. So that zooming can be super helpful for you. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and play this. <clears throat> Welcome to... Okay. So what we want to do and this is a nice little hint for you, is I want you to think about your audio like you would text. Imagine this is like a Word document or whatever kind of word processing type of program that you use. What would you do if you wanted to remove something? First thing you would do is you would highlight it, right? So I have a little kind of lip smack here. Okay, see that? That little very subtle, right? Maybe you didn't hear it, but I heard it. I don't want that. Okay, so very simply, I just highlight it. Okay, just like that. Okay, super easy just to highlight it to be able to do something with it. I don't know what I'm going to do, but you got to select it to affect it, right? So very simply, you just click and drag over it. Now, let's take a look at some of these options up on top here in this editing group. Cut, copy, paste, delete. That sounds tempting. There's my undo and redo. Pretty great. And then there's also something called silence, okay? What's the difference between deleting and silence? What delete's going to do is actually going to remove all of this space from the timing. So therefore, this 19 seconds, it's going to get less than 19 seconds, right? Minus whatever I've highlighted here, right? It's going to be like maybe a half a second. If I do silence, it does not change the entire length of the audio. Okay, so let me go ahead and watch to show you here. So I do this, delete, and then notice how it's now 18 seconds. Let me go ahead and undo that as opposed to silence it remains at 19 seconds, okay? So depending on what you wanna do. For my purposes, I'm gonna see here that I actually wanna get rid of all of this stuff here, all right? So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna highlight just this and play it. <clears throat> and then notice what that does. That just plays only my selection. So if you really, really were like, what is that? Let me just back up a little bit. I'm just gonna go, with, what is this thing? Let me just zoom in a little bit. See what's going on here. Play it. See that? I'm playing it over and over and over again. So what is that? Oh, okay. You know what? Yeah, we, we really don't need that. So I was able to really zoom in, really highlight it, right? And only just play that. Okay. So for my purposes, let me go ahead and start from here. Welcome. Good. So you know what? This is really the only good part. So let's just get down to it. I'm going to hit the delete option here, the icon, or I could just hit the delete key on my keyboard and that's great. So go ahead and let's just go ahead and do another one. Welcome to, let's just start from here. Welcome to this presentation on safety in the workplace. Oh, got another one to highlight all that. I'm gonna hit the delete key on my keyboard this time. In this presentation, we're gonna learn how to stay safe on the job. Are we still rolling? Uh oh. Okay. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff at the end also I did not need. So very easy. Let's go ahead and turn that off. All right. Now, just like how we saw earlier with um, when we did our recording, you have the option to do your preview if you wanted to as well, right? So you'll have your preview option there if you want to. All right. Now, a few other things you might want to do is potentially adjust the volume. Okay, so these are kind of our basics of editing. But if I say adjust volume, this is going to allow me to then even make it louder, right? If the microphone didn't come in that great or make it lower. Okay, so let's go ahead and make it louder. See if you guys can pick up on that. Take a look at my little sound waves there. Welcome to this presentation on safety. Okay, now let's go ahead and make it lower. 
welcome to this. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring that back up again. Maybe a little louder. Welcome to this presentation Just hitting the space bar to play in it. the workplace. In this presentation, we're going to learn how to stay safe on the job. Excellent. Okay. No signs of any of that gross misconduct from before, right? And that's great. That's the nice thing about doing this is that you have a pretty powerful and very simple to use editing tool to be able to get rid of any flubs, right? So don't worry about that in case that happens. Let's actually get rid of that one right there. I'm actually going to do a silence for that one. Okay. Welcome. To Fantastic. Good. So now I am ready to save this puppy. Close it out. All right. And then let's just go ahead and go back to our audio again. All right. I'm going to go back to my audio management. And I want you to see I still have my background. Okay. And I still have my slide one. Okay. Now, if I go back to my background, let me go ahead and edit that. Okay. I want you to notice, right, if I go back to my add replace option here, remember how I had a just background audio volume on slides with audio, right? So my background should actually not be as loud as it was when it first started, okay? Because it's going to duck down to 15% because now there is in fact audio on this, okay? So let's go ahead and preview this now. I'm going to go to the next slide. You're going to see how the background audio is going to get up a little louder. Welcome to this presentation on safety in the workplace. In this presentation, we're going to learn how to stay safe on the job. Okay, and then my background audio stays there all throughout. Fantastic. All right, so go ahead and pause the video, practice all that stuff. You can see again how powerful and easy to use all the audio tools within Captivate are going through our library, going through um, your timeline, going directly from the slides themselves, going through audio and audio management. Okay, and then what we're going to do in the next lesson is working with some of our speech management tools because some of you may be using some of the robots, right? And that's the choice you have. So we'll just see how that's going to work for you. All right. Excellent. Pause the video, practice, and we'll see you soon. And in this final lesson on audio and audio management and audio generation, we're going to talk about the speech to text option. Okay, working with the little artificial robots that Captivate provides. Now, Captivate provides just maybe two from what you've seen, but there's gonna be a ton more that you can download. So I'll show you how to get those in just a little bit. But the first thing we wanna do is go back to our slide notes. Let's go over here to window. We're gonna go over here to slide notes because guess what? I have all of these already typed out. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight it and copy. Just do Control C or Command C on the Mac. Mm -hmm. And then if you'll notice over here is this option for text to speech. Okay. Now you will also see that inside of audio and then speech management, but I'm going to go this way. I think this is a little bit easier to use. So I'm going to say text to speech and this comes up and it's not as overwhelming if I went the other way, because this, this just shows this particular slide that I'm working on. Okay. Now I'm working on this slide, which is my start course. And what I'd like to do is actually bring in, a text-to-speech option. So I'm going to click on the little plus sign. And then you'll notice here that there's a drop down for two different voices I can use. And there's also an option for me to put in that text that I just copied. All right. So it's a little bit of a kind of circuitous route to get there, but this is a great way to do it. Okay. Now, after you've done this, you want to now generate the audio. Okay, you see that generate audio. And before I do that, I just want you to notice this little note here from Captivate. You have not installed NeoSpeech voices. You can install these voices from the installation DVD or from the download site. Okay, so when you click on this, it's going to be about 1.8 gigabytes of download of voices, and you're going to get way more choices than just these two. Okay, so just keep that in mind. That's available. 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and say generate audio. It's gonna generate audio based off of this little line of uh, notes that I put in there. It's gonna say, hey, are you sure you wanna change the audio for start course? Because I still had my other audio in there that I brought in. I'm gonna say yes. And now here, I'm able to play it. Welcome to the lesson on safety in the workplace. We will learn all about how to stay safe on the job. Okay, so that's how that sounds. And just keep in mind that you do have the option to download um, some other ones from Neo Speech Voices. And of course, there's, there's other third parties available as well that you can put in your own text and it'll generate it for you. Some with a nominal fee. So pay more for more voices and, you know, for different quality. But there are a lot of other third party options out there. So go ahead and check those out. All right. But for right now, let's go ahead and just try out Zira. Generate audio. Say yes. Welcome to the lesson on safety in the workplace. We will learn all about how to stay safe on the job. Okay. So none of these are really ideal, but again, it should encourage you to uh, then explore some other options. So I'm going to go ahead and click on close. Okay. Go back to my timeline. Okay. I'll go ahead and play it. Well, welcome to the lesson on safety in the workplace. We will learn all about how to stay safe on the job. Okay. So there you have it. So you do have the option. If you don't have voice talent, if you don't have it in your budget, you can go ahead and just very easily take your notes that you've already written up and then put it into your text to speech option and it'll generate it for you. As we've discussed in previous lessons, Captivate provides a number of different assets available, including some preset slides and projects. Now you can get there from your assets and you can also look online at the Adobe website. Lots of places to get all these things, even from third parties. But now what's really neat is that Captivate offers something called learning interactions. It's also another very hidden, but very, very valuable set of learning interactions to be able to kind of be a little more creative with your approach of how you're going to share your information. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at one example. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just preview, hitting the F10. Once you know what PII is, you need to know how so to I'm going to go ahead and just pause that. But I want you to just notice that I can move my mouse over these and I click on that and you'll notice that this cool little interaction appears here. Okay, so not only is it interactive, but it's also going to show different text when I click on something. See that? So secure it. Bam, this tells me all about secure it. Limit it. Okay, great, this tells me all about that now. Okay, very cool. So it allows the user to have a little bit more engagement, right? So instead of using bullets, you might decide to use this, okay? Instead of having to actually put in captions to be able to you know, have something kind of fly in and do something, which is pretty neat, this is just another way to do this, okay? So and I'm gonna go ahead and get out of this. And I want you to notice now, when I click on this, it's actually something called a widget. Okay, so if you look over here, you see it says widget 13. If I go to my timeline, you're gonna see here, it's gonna show my widget 13 right there. Okay, now there is a little bit of audio associated with this. That's not part of the widget, but that was brought in to be able to be in sync with whatever the widget is showing. Okay, now if I double click on this, I want you to notice this is now taking me to my widget properties. Okay, so we're gonna get into this, but pretty neat because it allows you to very quickly change the whole look and feel and design of your widget without really having to do too much. So that's what we're going to get into. And just notice how there's a lot, a lot of options here. Now, this is just one of many widgets. Okay. So they're calling it widgets in this case, but it's also called a learning interaction someplace else, right? But they are the same exact thing. All right. So let's go ahead and we're just going to just do a new blank slide. Okay, so let's just go ahead and do it from here, actually. It'll probably be a little bit easier. And then I'm going to say interactions and learning interactions. Now, welcome to the world of widgets. So you're going to see here, I have a number of different options here, like really, really slick to be able to have, again, the interaction of the user. That's why they call it learning interactions. So you'll see here I have the option for an accordion, okay, different tabs, a timeline, okay, you can see here pyramids, right? You want to kind of make it a little gamified. You can see here surgical matrix, maybe you're doing a type of a certification of something like that. We're going to talk about that in the future, how we can bring people's names in there. 
a little glossary. I mean, really neat. There's so many things you can do. Okay, so you want to explore these. We're going to do a handful of these just so you can kind of get the feel for how we can interact with it because it's not super obvious at first, okay? But eventually it will. So let's just go ahead and do an initial one here, okay? So we're doing a lesson on, let's just say, accessibility, all right? So what do we need to do to make sure that we are 508 compliant? So I'm just going to go ahead and just say, insert. And here we are at this window to configure the interaction, okay? Now you can see here, I can choose my different looks and feel, okay, sort of, right? This isn't entirely the end all be all, but you can see, all right, great, I'm gonna choose this one, all right? Then you'll notice that down below, I have this option to customize. So you can see here's my default colors, or I can choose my own colors for my buttons. You can see here, let's go ahead and just change that to a very different color. So you can see, I get a nice little preview, like this orange color. Good, that really stands out. And when somebody mouses over it, what color is that going to be? Maybe I'll make it a little lighter orange color. Yeah, let's not get too crazy. All right, and then this is perfectly fine. All right, so it's just gonna stay white all throughout when somebody mouses over it, and it's gonna be bold, it's gonna be da-da-da, whatever you want it to be, but you can see up over and active, something we talked about in our buttons lesson, that when somebody mouses over it, it's going to look a certain way. When somebody clicks on it, it's going to look a certain way. Okay, but let's just keep it at this for right now. Okay, very good. And then you can see here, you can change your overall theme colors if you want to, right? So then bam, bam, you can go into these if you want. I'm just gonna go ahead and just keep it as is. All right, and then do you wanna scale the text for responsive projects? I would say absolutely you should be doing that. Okay, so just keeping that in mind. All right, so let's just come back to where I was before. All right. Very good, not gonna play around with this, but just know that you have the option to play around with your content, right? Everything else that you wanna get into here. So actually, you know what? Let's just go ahead and do that. I'm gonna to go to my background color and then make some changes. Maybe I'll just do kind of a stay, kind of a little subtle little backdrop there so people kind of get a feel for it, okay? And then the text, you can click on that. You're gonna see, all right, great. What's that gonna do, right? And then bam, okay, great, all right? And I click back over here and then go to my header. Do you want to turn off the header, right? Totally up to you. You don't care about that, but maybe you do. You're going to put a title in there, okay? So for my description, I don't want it to be italic. So I can just turn that off, right? Make that bold, okay? And then let's change it to a different font altogether. And good idea to choose some web safe fonts. You don't want to get too crazy with this. So I'll go to Calibri. See if I can find you in there, Calibri. There you go. And you can see I get feedback right away. And let's make that white. Okay, good. A lot easier to read for me. Okay, so we're pretty much good there. All right. But now let's say I wanted to give some information about my lesson here, right? Essentially, I want to work with my interaction title. Great. So what do I do? So very simply, just go ahead and double click on it. If I wanted to change this, I click on this, right? Come to here, I click on that, right? Just very simply, you can see, just do a simple double click on each of these elements here. So let's go ahead and again, change my interaction title. Okay, it's gonna say 508 compliance. How to make your learning module accessible. All right. So first things first. Okay. So alt tags on images. All right. So I come down to here. I'm going to double click on it. And you're going to see here, I want to say, ensure that all of your images have alt ter alternate <laughs> tags on them. In Captivate, you can do this by clicking in the drop down menu. Here's a nice little lesson for you. Okay, next to the object 
name. And by the way, in case you're curious, it's going to be this guy right there. We're going to do a whole lesson on accessibility. Okay. And choose the alt tag option. Great. Good. Now I'm ready to do something else, right? Let's do another one here. Okay. And then I'll just say heading styles. And we'll do another one here. Double click table headings. Okay. Ensure PDF and websites are compliant. Okay. And then maybe we're going to have a website or something like that that's going to be there. Okay. So now you may have noticed that when I clicked on these and I went into here, I have a few other options here. You can actually add in some audio if you want to, and you can also add in an image if you want to. Okay. So let's go ahead and just add in an image here and I'm going to import and let's go ahead and just bring in a picture of good old Jill and she's going to be there. Great. Fantastic. And now I click back on this and you can see I have the option to then also move the image to the left if I want to. Don't worry about it being skewed right now. It's not going to show up that way, but you can see I have that kind of control. All right. Now this might be an example of how I'm going to show, right? Bam, this is going to be a screenshot of me doing what I'm doing, right? Totally up to you. Now you could also add audio. Now the audio may already exist that you want to import into here. You see I have some MP3s or WAV files, totally up to you. And then when somebody clicks on it, they're gonna have that double, triple interaction, right? They click on it, they're gonna be able to read it, and they're also going to be able to hear it, okay? So you wanna reinforce that bit of information, okay? So, and the list goes on and on from here. Again, just double click, and it's pretty much the same thing, okay? So pretty straightforward, all right? Now, let's go ahead and I'm just gonna say, okay, All right, very good. And again, when I click on it, can't really do, do too much with it, right? But it looks pretty good, all right? But I'm gonna go ahead and just double click on it to be able to make some edits, just like I started off with. All right, I'm pretty happy with this. But again, you can very easily customize it and you can very easily make changes to it if you wanted to, right? So these are all these pre-built ones. Okay, let's go ahead and just cancel out of this. Now, before we actually do our uh, preview of this, let's make sure that we have a button that's ready to go on here because we need a button to actually kind of pause it because if we don't, then it'll just continue to go, <laughs> right? We don't want it to necessarily do that. So what we need to do is put a button in there, okay? So earlier lessons, we talked about the buttons and we talked about what it's gonna do to pause the timeline, all right? Because right now, if I preview this, let's go ahead and just do it so you know what I mean. All right, this is going to go, and I can certainly click on all this stuff here, right? And it's like, uh-oh, oh, well, I lost it, right? I don't want it to do that. I want it to kind of allow the user to then do what I want it to do when I'm ready to do it, okay? So let's go ahead and do the same thing now. Let's just go ahead now, and I'm going to bring in a button, okay? And I'm just going to make that solid, and let's make that kind of gray, all right? And then... I'm going to just start typing in there. Okay, next slide. All right, and I might need to kind of adjust this so it's going to be centered. Get some of my weird stuff out of there. And I bold it and everything. Okay, but is this a button yet? Nope. I need to say use as button. Now you will notice that something happens here. All right, I now have a new layer, right, called Smart Shape, but then I also have this guy right here, okay? And what does that mean? So let's go ahead and just go ahead and click on it. Let's go over here to timing. And I want you to see how it's going to pause the whole slide after one and a half seconds, right? The amount of time doesn't really matter. As long as it's in there to pause, you can even move this up here if you want to, if that feels distracting. But essentially, we're setting this up so it does not just automatically jump to the next slide, right? So we need to actually set this up in order to do that ahead of time on top of this widget. Okay, so that's very good. So let's go ahead and preview it now. All right, and we're just gonna wait. You see how it doesn't go. It pauses this time 
And now I'm able to, here's my cool little rollovers. I do that. Okay, cool. Very nice, excellent. I like that, nice and slick. Cool, and now I've read it all. Then I click here and look at that. Now it's gonna You're go to the next one. See, I'm in control of that, right? I wanna be in control of everything, okay? So just keep that in mind. You're gonna to need to do that for all your slides that are gonna have these learning interactions. All right, so very good. Now let's go ahead and do another one. It's gonna go and do another blank slide. Learning interactions, come to here. All right, and let's try one that's tabs. Click on insert. The customization options are pretty much gonna be the same thing. And also how we put in content is gonna be the same thing. That's what's so nice about this, right? So you can pick and choose which style you want. So you might wanna go a little bit deeper with just trying out more and more and more every time you come onto here, right? And then you of course can click on it to see what is it going to look like. Here's a little bit of a different one. See that when somebody activates it? And it's slightly different style. Okay, kind of a neat one. All right, so just go ahead and double click in there. All right, we'll just say compliance 101. Double click back onto the description. Okay, let's learn how to stay legal with our practices. Okay, so check it out. Here is one label. I just simply double click on it. Okay, review HR forms, contact legal. And you see what I'm doing here. All right, and then let's see, maintain. ethics, instructions, etc. Okay. Now let's go ahead and just go right to here. And you can see I have another section right down below. All right. And then maybe this is going to be a picture of the actual content, something like that, whatever you want it to be. Okay. Now with this one, I want you to notice there is another option here to add the button. Right, so and you'll see here, I can actually add on a fifth button, right? So pretty cool if you wanted to do that, All right? So really nice, it's all set up, ready to go, right? You don't need to really worry about these too much. And let's click okay, just to see what that's gonna look like. And again, remembering that it will continue on unless you put the button on there, all right? So I will just copy this. And remember what the action for this particular one is, is just going to the next slide. So it's something I can very easily just copy. Let's go over to there. All right. And also keep in mind that you can resize these as much as you want, right? So you can just kind of move this, you know, and just kind of have it do what you want it to do, right? If it's taking up too much space or something like that, you can very easily do that. All right. Now let's go ahead and preview this one. Very good. Let's see, notice how it pauses. Click on that. Let's see, nice, slick, different way of showing your content. Okay, very good. Now let's just maybe do one more just for fun. And let's maybe do something slightly different, okay, like this glossary. Okay, and again, same exact thing. Hey, you can try to choose a different theme, whatever you're working with here, right? And again, you can customize it. Same thing, however you want to, click on customize and notice this time it's gonna be terms, content, okay, and the header, all right? So again, we don't need to spend time doing that, but just know that you can very easily do that. All right, so these come built in already, right? See that, because it's like captivate stuff. Okay, cool, all right, if you wanted to change any of these, you can very easily just remove that word, okay? We're not working with that, okay? But if I wanna add in a word, very simply, all right? Let's just say ADA, okay? Americans 
with disabilities act. Uh, I'm making this up now, but I think it may be 1992, something like that, right? And then you put all your stuff in there. Okay, click on add, and you can see, bam, there that is, right? It just gets added in there. Okay, you can continue going on from there. Okay, let's just go ahead and do another one. Okay, we'll just say headings. Okay, headings are an important part of ADA or 508 compliance. Okay, and then you'll give some more information on that. Okay, we'll do one more. We'll just say alt tags. Okay, alt tags are okay, very good. And click add. All right, so you can see it's really starting to build out very slick. So what you might want to do is you just have a little link on your master page and your master slide that says, Hey, listen, anytime you want to get some more information, go to this slide, right? And this will just be that slide that you can have people go to, right? So really, really nice. Okay, now those of you who are pretty gung-ho about using this, they do give you a nice little feature here. If you are comfortable with this, you can see here you can import your words from an XML file, right? If you're not sure what that is, they do give you an example of what this looks like, right? So it's pretty much this is it. So this is already set up and this is how you are you are structuring your content. You can see here, bam, this is how it has to start. Then you have your term, right? And you can see, notice these little carrots here. Then you've got the label, okay? And then bam, great. And then you can go ahead and just bring it in yourself, right? Copy and paste the above example to create your own glossary. So you can basically start from scratch and put that in there. All right, so just note that it starts and ends with this open term and then it closes this term, okay? And then you start over a new one right there, okay? So you'll be able to see what that's gonna look like once you preview it, but basically you have your term, your label, your definition, you close out the term, and then you start all over again for each of the individual terms. Totally up to you, maybe that's how you have your stuff organized, but I don't want to ignore this, all right? So excellent, I'm ready to say okay, and it's gonna create it, it's doing something pretty amazing. And then let's go back to our button, copy that. And let's just go ahead and make this a little smaller. All right, paste that in there. Okay, very good. And now let's preview this, F10. And because I have a button there, it will be paused. No problems there. And then alt tags, nice, nice, nice. Okay, a few other things here. Here's headings, what I created. Okay, great. And then you'll also notice that I have these little alphabet clicks as well. Pretty cool, it takes me right there. All right, so we're checking out all of these. All right, so just keep in mind there are quite a few to work with in here, all right? So we won't really have time to do that, but the one that you saw earlier, this is this process circle. So you've really actually seen about four in action, but once you know how to do just one or two of them, you'll know how to do pretty much all of them. <laughs> okay, just give them a shot. All right, so pause the video, practice that, and good luck. In this next lesson, we're gonna talk about how to build quizzes. Now you are gonna want to do some knowledge checks all throughout your module, just to make sure that people are learning. Now, sometimes you're going to be reporting some of these knowledge checks to make sure that, hey, the manager knows that the student is learning this and they have been graded on this. And in order to actually go to the next level, in order to get a job, in order to get a certification of some kind, it needs to be documented that they have actually passed the test. So you can see here, I have one particular slide here that has some questions about PII personally identifiable information. Great, so you can see the student have just learned from all these things here, great. So I need to know that they have actually learned. So at the end, I'm going to have a quiz on these elements here. So you can see here are some questions, right, about certain things here, okay? So we're gonna have people arrange the following steps in sequence, so that's gonna be an interesting one, okay? You can see here's one, that's just gonna be simple multiple choice. Here's a true or false, 
here's going to be one that's kind of interesting that like, okay, so which one is this going to be, right? So mother's maiden name is this one versus this one, right? So this is going to be a slightly different type of uh, platform using matching. Now, there are several different ones that we can do. We're going to be exploring just a handful of them for right now. Later on, we'll get into drag and drop and we'll do some other kind of more advanced ones in terms of, you know, how we can do some different types of knowledge checks. All right. And let's do another one here. All right. And then finally, you're going to see here is this final quiz slide. All right. Now, what this is going to do is going to tell the student how they did on the quiz. Right. You can see how their accuracy was. Right. But there's a lot of things we can add to this. Right. We can add in you know, how they did out of a total amount, right? How they did compared to others and, you know, a few other things that we can do here. Now, what I want you to see here is when I click on, let's just say this one right here, okay? I want you to notice that there is a new tab called quiz that you may not have seen before, okay? And when I click on that, you're gonna see, it tells me what type of actual quiz question this is, the fact that it's graded, how many answers are going to be, and a few other options here, okay? Let's go ahead and go to this one. You can see here is quiz again. And you can see this is a multiple choice, it's graded. This time it only has three answers. Are we shuffling the answers? And so we're gonna get into these in more detail, but I just want you to see how we can at least deconstruct something that's already done, okay? So let's go ahead and click on quiz. This is gonna be true, false, graded. Okay, what's this one? This is matching, graded. Okay, cool. So I'm able to see kind of what's going on here. Okay, this is a sequence. All right, so let's at least kind of run through these so we can see what types of quizzes we can actually do. All right, and then when you finally get to the end, you're gonna see that this one is gonna be your, your quiz results, right? And we're gonna be creating this from scratch in our next slides, right? So let's just go ahead and preview this. I'm just gonna hit F10. I'm not sure if I know the answers to these at this point, so to bear with me here. Okay, so here we are. All right, so arrange the following steps in sequence of the home start, okay? So you can see, I can just go ahead and just drag them, and what is gonna be the order of what I want to do? Okay, so let's just go ahead and just say, limit it, restrict it, okay? Dispose of it, secure it, I don't know, maybe that's it, but you can see what I'm actually having the user do, right? So bam, just do that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and say submit. And they tell me right here, right on the fly, if you wanted to do that, you can see, right, incorrect. And it's giving me an explanation. It was pretty neat that you are able to do that. Our four basic steps to safeguarding are to limit information, restrict what they are, secure what's needed, and dispose, okay? Click anywhere or press Y to continue. Go ahead and do that. All right, good select the information that represents PII. Okay, okay, good. So I'm on another question. You can see here, this is gonna be a very simple multiple choice, all right? So this could be it right there. I'm gonna go ahead and say submit. Incorrect, oh man, okay, good. I'm, I'm learning, but you're gonna see my score is gonna come out here. All right, so let's go ahead and just say why this time. That works, okay, home start employee took down a computer social security number, then crumpled it up and threw it in the trash when it was no longer needed. This is a good example of safeguarding. That's probably false. Okay, I'm gonna say submit, good. And you can see here how I have very specific feedback for people, correct. Safeguarding means proper blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's great. So go to the next one. Please match this piece of information to its appropriate category, which is, is this versus this, personally identifiable by itself, or identifiable when it's paired. I'm gonna click on the drop down. You can see this is how this particular question works. So I'm gonna go ahead and say B, cross my fingers and look at that. You're right, several people could identify mothers with the same maiden name. This identifier does not need to be, okay, great, fantastic. I'm just gonna go ahead and click. And finally, we're at question five, order each piece of information by its value in assuming another person's identity. Okay, so what is the value of all of these, right? So it's probably gonna be this and that, okay? And then I'm gonna bring that back up here. Good, all right. And then I'll go ahead and hit submit. Correct, great, blah, blah, blah. And it gives me a nice little description. I click on that and then that's all I have because I only did five slides, right? So I'm actually not going to see the results in this case. Let's not worry about this right now. I'm gonna click out of this. So now you can see, wonderful, right? So this is just gonna be 
how we can view the quizzes, how we can actually take a look at them, right? And we can kind of break all these down, all right? So what we're gonna do in the next lesson is we're going to actually build them out from scratch and we're gonna have a nice idea of what each of these things does as we build them out. And we're gonna see what other quiz options are available for us as well as we're building it out from scratch. Now that we've seen our quizzes in action, let's see what it's like to build out a quiz from scratch. So we can see here, we have this compliance quiz learning module, but it has no quiz questions at all. And for most of you, that's where you're gonna be starting off. So we need to actually build something from scratch. So what do we do first? We need to actually create a results slide. And this is actually gonna be a very important part, not just to show results, but to actually do some reporting for your results. So just like how we did with our audio, we're gonna see we have the ability to go up here to our file menu tab up on top here and just choose quiz. And then come down here, we're gonna go over here to quiz preferences. Now there's quite a bit to take in here, like question slides, right? And a few other options right here, knowledge check slide. Maybe some of you are gonna be working with question pools. We'll maybe talk about that in future lessons. But for right now, let's just talk about our quiz preferences. And it's gonna take us to a dialog box that is essentially our preferences that we've seen before, all right? But you're gonna see that I have one just called quiz. And you can see here I have quiz, reporting, settings, pass fail, and default labels, etc. cetera, all right? So let's start off with reporting. And if, when you click on quiz and reporting, and notice it's the same tab that could be confusing, just notice it's the same thing, all right? But you will have to expand this out to see all of your options here. All right, so do you want to report this quiz, right? Do you want to enable this, right? Essentially, when somebody goes through the quiz, do you want to make this so it gets reported into SCORM? All right, so let's just go ahead and click on this now, and you're gonna see how we have this LMS and we have our SCORM standard here. All right, so LMS is just your learning management system. All right, so when you are reporting this, right, it's gonna go through your learning management system, right? You're gonna upload it in there, okay? And then your learning management system presumably is working with SCORM or SCORM compliant type of platform, and that's going to make it so it's going to analyze the quiz results and it's going to have an independent level to be able to present that information as something independent. So nobody's really messing with it so much. Right. So let's just start from the beginning here. You can see here's your LMS. Right. And you can choose which one you want. I'd say 99 percent of you are going to be other standard LMSs. OK. And then you can see here which SCORM level are you working with, right? Most of you will probably be at 1.2. You're gonna to wanna to talk to your learning management system administrator, okay? And then when you click on configure, you can see here, you can then put in whatever kind of information you want to be able to identify that course inside of the learning management system. So when you finally do your exporting, your zipping and all that stuff, it's gonna show it all in here, okay? So I'm just gonna just say, okay, this is gonna be compliance intro, right? I'll just say 2022. Okay. And then put a description in there. Okay. Totally up to you. All these things are totally up to you, whatever you want to put in here. Okay. So you will most likely have some kind of naming convention. However, you are structuring your content, right? How, however you work, you will put all this stuff in however you want to, right? But I'm just going to keep it as I have it right here, but you can see how easy it is to change that. All right. So this is pretty much now ready at this stage, right, to get exported to my LMS, it will be compliant with my SCORM level, right, with what standard I'm using right now, all right? Now, we'll continue going down here, and we're gonna look at our settings as well. So what we're gonna do next is, okay, are you working with any kind of template? I'm just gonna keep it at the default, not get too crazy with it, all right? And you're gonna see here, status representation. Are you looking at whether someone's completed or incompleted, or, are you going to be judging their success on whether, whether they incomplete or they just did not pass or fail, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and say incomplete, pass or fail. And that's going to take me ultimately to this place where I'm going to say, well, what is a passing grade? What is a failing grade, right? So it's going to be based off of the percentage of questions answered correctly, as opposed to 
how many slides did they watch? Totally up to you, right? You can just make it be whatever you want, okay? Now, success completion criteria, again, totally up to you, slide views or if whatever the quiz is passed, right? Maybe you wanna do both, one or the other, totally up to you, all right? And then you can turn that off if you want to. Again, tinker with it, you'll know what your standards are, what your criteria are, okay? Data to report, the quiz score, okay? Are you doing percentages or are you doing points, right? Again, totally up to you, I'm gonna keep it at percentage, all right? And then you may have some kind of initialization text that you want to show up on your LMS, right? That you're basically saying it's loading or something like that. You click on advanced, right? You can do a few other things on here as well. This is all going to have to do with what your LMS is dictating. So I'm not going to get into this at this point, but I just want you to not ignore that. All right. So let's now go over here now to settings, go a little bit further. And you can see here, these are our quiz settings. This isn't about reporting. This is the actual quiz settings. And keep in mind, a lot of these things you can change later on, okay? So don't worry about it, okay? What's gonna be the name of this? Just keep it as quiz, okay? Required, okay? So required, the user must take the quiz to continue. Okay, good, we net definitely need that. The user can skip the quiz, right? Totally up to you, pass required, right? The user must pass the quiz to continue. So we basically, we really want people to learn. We're not testing them out. So you just want them to keep going and going and going until they really get it, which is totally fine. It's just nice to be able to do that. Okay. Answer all the questions. The user must answer every question to continue. All right. So really up to you, right? See, these things might kind of overlap a little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and just say the user must take the quiz, right? I'm not going to be so stern about it. Bam, they went through it all. And that's probably going to be the most standard one that you're going to do. All right. Then we have these settings down below here, all right? So earlier I showed you one that shuffled the answers. So maybe you wanna do that for every single one. Do you want answer shuffling for all the applicable question types? I'll just say yes, why not, okay? Do you wanna add on these buttons? Do you wanna have a clear button, a back button, a skip button, right? Show, sure, why not, okay? Yes, I do want it for all of them. Do I want a back button? Yes, I want it for all of them. Do I wanna skip? Sure, why not, right? Give people the benefit to be able to do that. And again, some of these I'll be able to remove, so don't worry about it. Review mode navigation buttons, okay? So there's gonna be a little box in the bottom for people to be able to review the answers that they gave and also review the feedback as well, okay? I'm also gonna add on a submit all button, right? This is a good to thing to have there just in case people miss at the end, right? They keep hitting submit, submit, right? And the org, you're hitting next, next, but if they haven't actually submitted it, I just have a rule of thumb to always keep that there. There's gonna be a message that you can customize all of this stuff here, totally up to you, right? That, do you want it to say submit all? Do you want to say you've answered all the questions? What do you want to do next? If they're incomplete, what do you want to have here? Submit all answers. All this is customizable, whatever you like, okay? But again, that's entirely up to you, all right? Uh, we're not going to talk about branching right now, but that is something in the future you may want to do if there is going to be branching, that when somebody clicks on something, then you want it to actually go someplace else. We'll talk about that in future lessons. All right, show progress. So as they're going through, it's basically going to say, hey, listen, how far along am I, right? One of five questions. Great. You want to have that? Or you just want to say, all right, just showing five questions, right? Totally up to you. It's going to say relative. You want to have that there. Do you want to show the score at the end of the quiz? So I'm going to say yes. In fact, I do. Okay. Allow users to review the quiz. Do you want to do that? Okay, and then do you wanna hide the play bar, right? The play bar at the bottom, which we're gonna show how we can customize that in upcoming lessons, right? Do you wanna do all that? All right, now let's just take a look at some of our options here. Congratulations, you passed. Sorry, you failed, right? Or, you know, take it again, come back again, or let your manager know, something like that, right? Now, this is where you can now really customize that quiz results, right? Slides, you said, do you want the score? the max score, okay, correct questions, total questions, okay, bam, all these things here, right, quiz attempts, okay, so all these things you might want to have here, okay, so again, totally up to you, but I'll just put them here for now so you can see what they all look like, all right, let's continue on, pass or fail, what does passing or failing mean, right, so earlier we talked about that, what are we going to use, what score in order to determine what pass fail is. So I'll just go ahead and be nice. I'll say 75%, okay? Then we have an action. If 
there is a passing grade. What do you want to have happen, right? So I can then just kind of take them maybe to another slide. Earlier, we talked about some of those learning interactions. Maybe you want to take them to that certificate slide. That's great, right? So you can go directly to a particular slide and you'll have that there, okay? I'll just say continue for right now, all right? And then if failing, right? I'm gonna go ahead and just uncheck these and then you can see what your options are here. Bam, bam, bam. You can see pretty much similar options there. Maybe you even wanna send an email, right? You can do all kinds of different things. Send them to your website. So many different options here. Maybe even some audio you want to be triggered. Okay, but the reason why it was grayed out is because if you're giving them infinite attempts, they're just going to keep going and going and going until they pass, right? Which is maybe what you want to do. Okay, but if that's not what you want, you can just uncheck these. All right, and then you choose the action you like. All right, and then these default labels, this is again something you might want to customize, but you can see what we saw earlier. Correct, click anywhere or press Y to continue. Okay, great. That's when people are giving the correct response or the incorrect, right? So you can see that bam, bam, bam. So whatever you wanna do there. But then for each individual slide, you'll be able to customize some of the choices that they're gonna get when they've gotten it wrong. All right, so pretty cool. Excellent. So I'm pretty much done with this right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. Okay, and you will see that it now puts in this quiz results slide. Okay, so I'll, and you can see all the different fields there and everything like that. So I'm just gonna just drag this to the bottom. All right, it might just kind of end up where it wants to go. And you're gonna see now that this is available with all of those boxes that I checked, what my scores can be, my maximum score, correct question, all that good stuff there. Okay, and then when I go to quiz, you're gonna see I'm gonna have all those choices back again. You can see, do I not want some of these things here? Do I not want to show the max score? Turn that off. Okay, total questions, don't need that. Okay, and all these things are clickable, right? So you want to move this around, move that around, right? Move this up, right? Whatever you want to do, you can do all this stuff here, right? So then just keep this separate if you like. And in the next lesson, we are going to create our new quiz questions, or we're going to see how they're magically then going to feed into this. We're going to see our score and we're going to be able to see all the different quiz questions, options available and how easy it is to create. Okay. We'll see you in the next lesson. Now that we've completed the very important task of creating our quiz results slide, let's actually start creating our quiz. So number of different ways we can do to create some quiz questions is we can go over here to slides and we can say question slide and you'll notice this insert questions, all these little types of questions. You can say I want to do multiple choice, true, false, right? All these things here and also notice how there's the number of multiple choice you want to do, et cetera. And also, do you want it to be graded, survey, or pretest, right? So what is that going to be, right? So maybe it's going to look like a question pretest, but it's actually not going to be graded. So it's not going to be part of it, but people will think it will be. Survey just might be like, you know, what department are you in? Something like that. Let me go ahead and cancel out of this. And let's show another way you can do it. If you go back to quiz, you can see here is this option for question slide. And then here is shift control Q and you're going to see same options now appear. All right. So let's just go ahead now and I'm going to click on multiple choice, true, false. I'll do fill in the blank so we can see something a little bit different. All right. And then there's matching. All right. And then you can see there's our sequence, right? So you can see list goes on and on all these things that we can just add in there, right? Maybe you want to try a hotspot. Who knows, right? Let's just go ahead and just check it all out. Click on okay. And you can see it's running its little engine there. And now you will see I have all these questions now coming up as they're coming up, right? So really cool. And then finally, there is my quiz results. All right. Now, why is it coming up the way that it is in terms of the look and feel? Okay. Because of the design that we have here. So I just want you to note that this is still connected to the master slide, right? So if I go over to here to master slide view, I want you to kind of look under the hood a little bit. 
I want you to take a look so you can see that, that I have this MCQ, right? Multiple choice question, true, false, or fill in the blank, matching. They're all pretty much like as they are. If you wanted to customize these, you can customize them, right? If you want to get rid of this thing here, if you want to just make this left aligned, right? All those things you can do, right? Totally up to me. If you want to get rid of it all together, you have the choice to be able to do that on the back end, right? So this isn't necessarily creating the quiz, but it is looking at the back end, right? Like what we've done in the past and in, in, in a recent lessons of how to work with the master slides to be able to make these changes if you want to. All right, but I'm going to keep it as is, but just know if it's coming in, it's, it's not working the way you want it to. You can very easily make those changes. Okay, so let's go ahead now and start making some changes. All right, so type the question here. Okay, great. So I just simply double click. All right, and I'll just say what is an example of PII, okay, personally identifiable information. Okay, great. And that's it, right? That's, that's your question. I also want you to notice here that there's this multiple choice kind of just sort of automatic placeholder. You can absolutely remove this if you want to, or I can just say, hey, listen, this is going to be question one, right? or call this PII, right? Whatever you want to say, you can absolutely do that. And remember the location of it and the look and feel of it and all that stuff is all because of the master slide view that is determining this. All right, now let's go over to the quiz tab so we can see what's going on here. So notice how this is a multiple choice slide, right? And that's the type of quiz that we're working with here. And we chose it to be graded, okay? It can be graded or survey, right? So bam, we have that there, right? And the reason why you can see how this is grayed out is because we are reporting the answers down below. See that? And this is all coming down to how we set it up earlier that, okay, this is gonna be set up through our LMS and it's gonna be reported however we wanna be reported that this is the person got this result, right? Bam, or you can turn that off if you want to. All right, good. Now how many answers are going to be in these results, right? In these choices, I should say, right? Right now we only have two. So guess what? I could just change this to four. And hit enter. And look at that. Now I have four. All right. Do you want to have multiple answers? So what is the difference there? Basically, you might want to say, okay, what are some examples, right? So you can say some what? are two examples, okay? And you want to say, go back to quiz here, could be multiple, okay? So you can see here, I can then choose my two that are going to be the case, all right? Notice how when I turn that off, it's going to change from a circle, a radio dial button to a checkbox, all right? So you can actually pick and choose which one you want. Right, so I'm gonna keep it as this because understand that what's selected here is going to be the right answers, all right? So I'll just go ahead and just say social security number. I'm sure you don't wanna watch me type all day, but let's just go ahead and put this in here. Okay, I'll just say birth date. And then favorite color, first pet's name. And it's gonna be your birth date and this, okay. So these two things are gonna be our PII, but when they take the question, they're not necessarily gonna see these, all right? But we know that these are going to be the right answers. So it's very simple. All you gotta do is just pick those two. Now, you can give people a partial score if you want to, since there are two things happening here. So you can say, all right, you know what? Let's give people a partial score. So it's a total points of 10, but they'll get five as a result, all right? But you can see here, you can say, you know, all these different things if you want to as well. But I'm gonna keep it as is right now. I want them to actually get both because that is part of the question. If they get it wrong, you can penalize them too if you want to. It's not very nice, but you can definitely do that. <laughs> all right, and then you can see here is numbering. Right, how you want it to be structured, ABC, small ABC, right? How do you normally do things? Bam, you can do that, super easy. 
Okay, let's go ahead and go on to another quiz type and you're gonna see here, very different, right? A little bit more complex. All right, so I just want you to see how these guys are interacting with these guys. You got column one and you got column two. All right, so which one matches up with which one? And again, I know you don't wanna watch me typing, so let's just go ahead and just see, okay, item, this item is gonna match up with C. So that's how we're telling it. Bam, that's what that's gonna do. This will match up with A, you can see that, and this is going to match up with B. All right, so basically we're saying, okay, this one matches that one. All right, so you can say like, all right, you have a particular situation, who do you contact, all right? So maybe you're saying situation, and we might wanna say department to contact, okay? So you might just change this. This is going to be IT, this will say HR, okay? And we'll just say US government, all right? And then, Right, we'll just call this virus. Okay, call this phishing. And call this theft. All right, great. So, yeah, I'm not sure if these are matching, but let's just make a match. So, for a virus, this is going to be to IT. All right, now I'm starting to see, okay, this is making sense. Phishing, that's probably also going to be. IT, and then theft, I'm gonna call the police. All right, so let's just change that. Okay, now we're starting to cook a little bit. So before we get any further, let's go ahead and just preview this guy. All right. Very good, looks nice. Got some questions, questions one of five, because it's all relative. Good, good, good. I'm gonna say false. I'm gonna say next. All right, complete the sentence. Okay, move by filling in the blanks. Oh, oh, it looks like I skipped one. All right, we'll come back to that one just a little bit. All right, so let's just try this one then. Let me see how to do fill in the blanks in a second. Good, all right, so which is which? Fishing, which is it? Okay, I think we're gonna go to IT for this and notice how it's shuffled. All right, theft, C, virus also, IT, great. Okay, good, and we're gonna see what a hotspot looks like in just a little bit. All right, so I skipped this one, so let's go ahead and just work on this one here. So type in the blank phrase, okay? So the term for when a threat actor poses as a company in order to collect private information from a user. What is that called? That is called phishing. So that is what I'm gonna have people put in here. Okay, so if I double click on that, you're gonna see what is gonna be the option here. Okay, and I'll just put in phishing, but you know what? Some people spell it differently. I'll do phishing, okay, and I'll do fish or fish, okay? Just to be fair about that, okay? So you can see, all right, and then let's take a look what this is gonna see. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and just do this one right here. All right, type the phrase. So I click on that, I'm gonna type out phishing. I'll say next, excellent, and there I am. Okay, so you can see how we can do a series of these. All right, so this is definitely gonna be something you're gonna to want to you know practice over and over again. So here we are now on the hotspot option, and just for the interest of time, let's just go ahead and just imagine we are wanting people to just click on a certain part of an image, right? So we'll just use the background as an image, but you can very easily just bring in your own image and then you can make that all clickable. So in a good example, this might be 
you know, working with, with a map, right? Working with a floor plan, working with anatomy, right? Something like that. All right. But now I only have one hotspot. I want to make it so, okay, I need to tell me, okay, what's going to be, you know, the whatever fingers or something like that. So I need to go back to quiz. I'm just going to add on two more. Excuse me. I should actually type in three total. All right. And then great. There they are. Move them around accordingly. Okay. And then these are going to be the areas that we know are the right answers, but they won't know it, right? Because they might actually click on the palm of his hand, right? On his eyeballs, right? We don't know, right? They don't know. Now, what you want to do before you actually preview it, <laughs> let's back up a little bit, is you want to turn off this, right? Because you do not want people to actually see that there is any type of, this is for you, but if you were to preview it, you actually, it's going to show all those lines there. So now let's go ahead and preview it. Okay, and now notice when I mouse over, I'm not really getting any kind of like feedback, right? I'm gonna click here. Okay, cool, click there. And then if I click here, notice it actually does add on that, right? And I know that's not right, but I want you to see what that's like for the user in case they do click on it, right? So I can just go ahead and click on it again if I change my mind, right? I say submit all and then great. One or more of the questions is incomplete. That's fine because I'm not done yet. So I go next and then here I am. Okay. Very good. And now let us preview and take the quiz so we can see what it's going to look like at the end. So here I am at this first slide and I'm going to say is preview and I'm going to say from this slide. So I'll be able to see all of them, not just five. And here I go. I'm going to go ahead and take my quiz and see what it's going to look like. OK, so we'll see what are two examples of personal identifying information. OK, what was it again? OK, I think it was this one and that one. Say next. All right, social security numbers should be shared off the phone. OK, well, I got a typo there. I got to fix that. I'm going to say false. And then, OK, the term for threat actor. OK, who poses? That is the fishing. Okay, good. And I am kicking butt here. So let's see, Department of Contact, situation. All right, if we're gonna say virus, that is gonna be IT theft. That's going to be, I think I said police. Oh yeah, okay, fishing. That's also gonna be IT. Great. And then let's just see here. I got this one, this one, and that one. Okay, there's my hotspots, submit all. One or more questions is incomplete. Answer all the questions. Go to the next one. Hit submit all a little prematurely. All right. And then let's go next. Submit all answers. And here it is. Quiz results. I got 44 questions. My accuracy is 67 because I think I missed one. And I give the option to retake the quiz if I want to because that's what I said in the beginning. And I'm good to go. All right, so of course we're just testing it out at this point, but just know I do have you know one that I didn't finish, and you know you have all these things here. Okay, now just keeping in mind, right, that you have all these options here within the quiz themselves, right? You have all the options within the actual like quiz settings, right? All your preferences. But you can always go back and make these changes, right? So let's just go ahead and go back into here and check out again all your reporting options, right? What is going to be you know, uh, pass or fail, okay? All your settings, what do you want these options to be here or not, okay? Do you wanna have review mode, right? So all these things here, you can change them anytime you want, okay? So I think pretty straightforward, you know, give it a shot. In future lessons, we're gonna go a little bit deeper into quizzing, we're gonna do drag and drop, we're gonna be working with question pools, we're gonna be doing a little bit more, but this should be a really good foundation for you moving forward, okay? Pause the video. Practice up, then we'll see you in the next lesson. Before you publish your documents, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your skin or the wrapper of your player looks the way you want it to look. So we have the ability to really customize what the skin is gonna look like. 
Maybe you want different colors. Maybe you want certain buttons there, certain buttons you don't want there. For example, maybe you want to have a closed captioning button. Maybe you want to have a mute button. Okay, maybe you want to have one color look different than the rest. Maybe you want to add your logo in there, certain bits of information. Captivate gives you so much control and so much personalization options that you can really make it your own and make it stay in line with your company. All right, so let's just go ahead and just do a quick little preview. Let's just go ahead and say next five slides and we're gonna be able to see, in fact, what our skin currently looks like. So what am I talking about when I say my skin? So if you take a look down here, you'll be able to see I have all these colors and everything like that. I have this little play bar. I have the ability to mute. I have the ability to close it if I want to, right? You even have some other options to rewind, you know, all this stuff here. But this particular document does not have a table of contents, so we're gonna work on that later on. Okay, but you can see here I am, and I can go ahead and begin and do all this stuff, and this kind of moves on, and that moves on. You can see it coming just like that. Now, is this gonna be important for you? Maybe, maybe not. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna customize this. We're gonna kind of just start from the beginning what this might look like for you and what you might want to see. All right, so how do we do that? We're gonna go over to here to our little project menu, and we're gonna come over here to our skin editor. All right, so what we're talking about with the skin again is this bottom part down here. Now, this can be very, very customized. All right, now what you're seeing here might look a, a little bit different than what we've seen in Captivate so far. And this window is actually a lot more than meets the eye. And then we're gonna go even further when we get into our table of contents. So there's actually quite a bit going on here. So we're gonna kind of take our time looking at all these. So let's just first start off with this right here. We have this skin and we have different themes that are built into it. Some of you who do absolutely nothing at all We'll just see this, and this is your Captivate default, and this is what it's going to look like, okay? And maybe that's all you care about, right? You just want it to look like this, and then you're gonna move on, and this is the end of the road for you, and this is exactly what you want, okay? Let's go ahead and take a look at a handful of other ones. Let's go to Aluminum, very similar to that one. Let's try Cool Blue, okay? Ooh, very different, okay? Let's try Mojave. Okay, so you see how we have all kinds of different choices to go through, right? And there's, you know, you really want to explore these. Now, what's so nice about these, I'm just gonna to go to black glass. Okay, what's so nice about these is that they're very customizable, right? So you start off with one template, with one skin, but then guess what? We're going to be able to then customize it even further, all right? So this is just going to be a starting point for you. All right, so first thing is, do you want to even show playback control? See that? When I uncheck that, all this disappears. Sometimes you just want people to just kind of kick back and then just watch it. Or you're creating the buttons, you're creating the interactivity, and you don't want them to be distracted by anything here, right? Which is totally fine. You don't even want to give them choices to do it. You're going to be in control, right? But I'm going to turn that back on. Do you want to hide the play bar during the quiz? You don't want people to kind of think that they have control when you really don't want them to have control. And then maybe the play bar is even interfering with it. It's like, oh, wait a second. You know, they're trying to click on something and then it, it kind of overrides what's in the quiz. So let's go ahead and just hide the play bar. And then we also have the overlay option. Notice how that's just kind of going up a little bit. I never really do the overlay, right? Because it's kind of cover up all my beautiful stuff there. So I'm going to uncheck that. All right. Now you will see here that my play bar is the black glass skin. All right. Now what's neat about this part is that now we're going to be able to customize these. So we're saying, hey, thank, thank you, black glass. But I'm going to take it from here and I'm going to do things a little bit on my own. All right. So first thing is, do you want to have your play bar in two rows, right? Maybe that's going to be a little bit better for your users, right? Who knows? Maybe they just prefer to do it that way. They give you those choices. Next level of customization is going to be your playback colors, right? So check it out. We got your background, your button glow, your button face, and your button icons, right? Believe it or not, you're seeing all those things here, right? Here, 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 right? But guess what? I can't actually click on these. Why not? Because I have to click on this checkbox to then activate them. Okay, so now let's just see what does the background do. Let's just go ahead and make this jet black. We'll see, okay, very good, right? I can see what the background does. Button glow, oh, okay. Let me just do like yellow. 
Nice glow. Yeah, kind of like that. Very nice. Button face. Oh, that's this guy. Oh, okay. Let's maybe just do like kind of a grayish color. Okay, nice. Kind of settles in a little bit, but if you change your mind, let's maybe a little bit lighter. Note you can even put in your RGB, your hexadecimal code. You can even use an eyedropper and take it from your canvas if you want to. Totally up to you. All right, very good. And then the button icon, I'm just going to, let's just make it red. Okay, fun. All right, again, of course, you can change all those things there. All right, very good. Now, let's go ahead and just take a look at some of our other options here. So some of these may be grayed out, mostly because we are working in responsive mode, right? And they don't necessarily let you change certain things when you're in responsive mode. If you're not working with responsive, right, you may actually see these things lit up. So just know that. All right, now, do you want these elements or not? Do you want the play button? Do you want the rewind button? All these things here, right? So I'm gonna uncheck rewind and fast forward and notice that's going away. I'm gonna uncheck the back. Why? Because I'm gonna have a back button on my actual module itself, potentially, right? Do you wanna have the close button there, right? Let's just see kind of that comes and goes, right? So you wanna give people these options or not. If you're gonna have sound, you wanna give people the ability to mute. Pretty straightforward, right? Really nice they've thought about all these things. Do you want this progress bar? And to you, it might seem like, yeah, sure I do, right? I want my users to know what's going on. Many times, it's not even gonna really matter, right? So turning this off will just kind of give you more space here, you know, for other things potentially, right? And it's just gonna be less kind of, you know, distracting for people. So many times the progress bar isn't gonna really make a difference, but of course, if you want it, and it does make a difference for you, you can always turn that back on. Right. We are going to do a future lesson in another video session um, about closed captioning and accessibility. So stay tuned for that. But this is where you're going to find that. All right. Then you also have this no tool tips at runtime. Right. So as it's actually running, you don't want any kind of like little rollover thing to tell you what it is. Right. So maybe you want to turn that off. Right. I kind of like people to have that. So I'm going to keep that going. All right. So now if I love this. Right? and I'm ready to go and I wanna keep this and use it again and again and again, I can save this, right? You see, here's this save as, you can do that. And I'm just gonna say black class DC 2022, okay? And I click on my dropdown and guess what's there, okay? This is my personal customization option that I have now saved, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and close this out. The close is way up here, this tiny, tiny little X, as if it does not wanna be found. And now, I'm gonna go ahead and preview this puppy. Next five slides. And wait for it. Let me see my beautiful little thing here. There we go. Okay, very nice. Okay, do I have that there? Okay, that's great. I changed my mind. I wanna work on a little bit more. Let's go ahead and go back to project skin editor and You'll notice it does something a little bit weird. It's kind of spaced them out. Not what I asked for, okay? So unfortunately, that's just how it's set up, right? With your HTML5, it automatically does the stretched. Okay, we cannot unfortunately remove that. So just keep that in mind that you may not get exactly what you had expected to see, okay? So there are a few bugs here and there within Captivate. Maybe the next version, they will work on that, all right? So, but just know you can always come back to these anytime. So I decide, you know what? I actually don't want it to be red. Now I'll just make it maybe a lighter gray color. Okay, that's a little bit more tasteful. Okay, and very good. This is good. And then I would just save it, save it. Okay, I'm gonna replace it. Good, come back. Let's do F10. Let's see if my changes were activated and updated. Here it comes, very good. There's my colors, my overlay still works. Excellent, super happy, good to go. All right, so pause the video and then in the next lesson, we're gonna work on creating a table of contents for your learning modules. In the last lesson, we worked on creating the skin. If you recall, you go right to project, you can go over to here to skin editor, and you can see all the things that I've changed there. It looks great, super happy with that, okay? Now, within this same dialog box, you have this th third tab up here. You see here's table of contents where you can actually start manipulating it from here. 
Now hiding inside of this is this other one in case you ever wanted to do a border, right? So you can see how there's a few options here, not a ton, right? Some of these might be kind of grayed out just because of the HTML5. So I'm not gonna to focus too much on that. All right, so just wanna not ignore it really. Okay, but I want you to see here is this table of contents because you can get to it from here and you can also get to it from project and then table of contents, right? And it takes you literally to the same tab. So let's now build out our table of contents. Why do we wanna have a table of contents? We wanna be able to allow our users to be able to see what different types of chapters are coming up within their training module. We want them to be able to go to and fro right within the training module. And also we wanna be able to organize all of our different chapters accordingly, all right? And maybe we wanna color code them and everything like that. So making it more interactive, more instructive, just kind of more user-friendly. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say show TOC. All right, and you're gonna see a lot of stuff appears here, okay? And some of you may notice that magically, certain things already populated start course. Oh, welcome layout, course topics. Oh my God, look at all this. This is why we talked about initially making it so your slides all have names, right? So if you need some review on that, go all the way back to one of my first lessons in the last part of the series, okay? so. Excellent. So you can see here, I can click on these and also you can click on these to see what it's going to look like. Eventually, we're going to learn how we can actually customize what these are going to look like. But right now, it's looking pretty good. Now, some of these you may not want, right? So the ones that just say slide numbers, I'm going to actually turn that off. Okay, so what else do not, don't I want? Okay, eh, no, not necessary. Let's get rid of these. No. Okay, so let's get rid of this one. Okay, not so good. Okay. Great. So we can see here, I've got a lot to work with, right? But I have a lot of stuff happening. This is a very robust um, training module. Okay. So now let's say I want to get things a little bit more kind of organized a little bit. Okay. So I'm showing my table of contents. I'm deciding what I want to see here. But number one, I may want to rename things in terms of my organization. Then I also might want to structure some of these things as well. All right. So I'm going to change this from start course to intro. So all you're gonna do is simply double click right here, and I'm gonna say intro slide, okay? And then notice it changes here, and it also changes there. So all you do is simply double click, okay? So come to here, let's say our mission. Great, and then that changes here. All right, so very easy to do that, okay? So, so far we said show table of contents, we said certain things will not be visible, and now what have we done? We've renamed it. So it's going to show accordingly on the table of contents tabs as well. All right. Now let's go down below here where we're going to have these little icons. This is going to be give you the ability to make folders, which we're going to see what that's going to do in a little bit. Okay. You're going to see this is going to allow you just to reset it back to where it was, which we're not going to do, but it gives you the option. And these guys are going to give you the option to kind of create sort of headings and subheadings but then also you can move some of these elements up and down. If you decide you want this one to be, you know, third or something, you can very easily bump that up. Okay, so let's go ahead and start off with the folder option. Okay, so you're gonna see here, I have this topic name. Okay, I'm gonna double click on that and I'm gonna say, welcome, I'm not gonna capitalize these, welcome slides. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bump this so it comes inside of it, just like that. Bam, bam, and bam, okay? And you'll notice that welcome slides does not have a slide number. It's just a container. You'll also notice that I have a little triangle to allow me and my users to collapse and expand it. You see that? And you'll also notice that same thing is happening right here. So for this particular training module, there is a lot of slides, a lot of pages here for people to look through. Maybe they wanna collapse it so they're not taking up so much. And maybe even for you, you might wanna do that, okay? So let's just go ahead and just do another one. Bam, this comes up and we can start another one. Okay, so we'll just say our team, all right? And this time I'm gonna go ahead and just highlight four of these by holding down the shift key and then bump it in. Okay, see how fast and easy that is? 
do one more. Okay. All right. And then we'll have another one. So let's call this one resources. And let's do a bunch for these, holding on the shift key and then bump it in. And you can see, all right, very cool. See that? So I've got a whole bunch kind of sandwiched inside here. I can collapse and expand that, right? And you can do the same thing here, of course. All right. So really neat, great way, important way to stay organized with all of your content and allow your viewers and your students to do the same. Okay, now we're on our way. Let's now go over to here to settings. Okay, so I'm gonna click on settings and now this is gonna take me to a completely different dialogue box. And it's gonna be very similar to what we saw with our skin, where it's gonna give us some choices of how do we want our table of contents to look? How do we want the layout to be? How do we want it to act essentially? All right, some of these things are gonna be grayed out, again, because we're working with our responsive, you're working in non-responsive, you get different choices. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so what do we wanna have here? Okay, runtime options, collapse all, okay, see that? Collapse versus expand. So when this is running at first, I want all of these to potentially not be showing all their contents. Maybe you don't want to do that, right? Because you actually want people to be able to see them. You're finding that some of your users completely miss them all the time. So you can you can go ahead and just turn that off, right? Totally up to you, all right? So um, your self-paced learning, just allowing people to click through if you want that, okay? Show topic duration. You see all these guys right here, okay? So I can turn that off. I absolutely don't need that because it's not always gonna be the same duration, okay? Navigate visited slides only, eh, you know, probably not. Like you want people to go wherever they wanna go. Again, totally up to you, you experiment with this. Now you can see here is show search. Maybe you want people to be able to search throughout, so you can turn that on, turn that off, right? You can see there that is. You want people to be able to have the quiz be part of the search, totally up to you. Status flag, you're gonna see, Right when we have visited something, we're going to see like a little thing that's going to show up there. Okay, so we'll keep that on just so we can see what that's going to look like. All right, and your clear button relates to the status flag itself, so you can say, "Hey, listen, you know what? I want to clear out that I visited all of these." So you can just say, "Hey, clear," and it's going to go away. Okay, so All right, and then the whole movie duration, you'll actually see that on the bottom. It's not showing up down there, but normally you should be able to see the whole movie duration. And then this is where you can really start doing all of your kind of design work. And very similar to what we saw in our last movie, background, I'll just go ahead and do black. All right, and then heading. Let's go ahead and just make it red so you can really see what it's doing there. Okay, active entry. Let's just do completely different color. Okay, when somebody goes through it, that when they're actually on that particular one, it's gonna show, right? And then you can see that's where these are right there. These are gonna be a bunch of nice looking, for the most part, little gradients here. Click away and then heading. I'm gonna make that just a little more subtle. TFC outline. Okay, good, that's coming together. All right, now we're gonna go a little further with this level one, level two, level three text, okay? So what are we looking at here? So let's just go ahead and just bring this up to, let's just say 16. There you go, level one. That's our heading and our subheadings, okay? I wanna make these so they're gonna be bold, okay? Maybe 16 is too much. So, okay, very good, I can make those changes there. Maybe you want to change it to a completely different font. We're going to keep it at Perdona for right now. Let's go over here to level two. And do I want to bold that? Sure. It's not so bad. Let's make that 12. Good. A lot easier to read now. All right, we don't have any level three, but if we did, we would be able to make those customization right there. Okay. Oh, and one last thing you might want to do is adjust the width of the table of contents. Do you see that there? So you might wanna make that wider. You cannot actually get any more narrow than 250, but if you wanted to make this to 300, you can see you can do that. And you can also move your mouse over it. You can make it wider like that. 
Now you'd want to do that in case you wanted to see all of your text here, right? Because maybe your text is not showing. Uh, you can see it's going to allow you to do that. All right, let's go ahead and click OK. And do one last thing with our table of contents, and that is fill in all of our information about the actual training, about the company, add in a logo. And we're going to really sort of complete it with some of this pretty valuable and necessary information. Okay, so how do we do that? We're just going to come over here to this little info button, and this is going to take us to this very simple form. We're just going to say, okay, well, what is the title? We're going to say safety in the workplace. Okay, you'll notice that as I'm typing it out here, it's showing up here in real time. Okay, and our name is going to be Safeco. Okay, email, it's going to be hr at safeco.com, website www.safeco.com, safety is our middle name. Okay, now can't really see it here, don't worry about it, but it is there. But what we're going to do in a little bit is we're going to customize this, right? So it's going to make it so we can actually see it a little bit better in terms of size and color and all that stuff. And that's where this area comes down. But before we do that, let's just kind of go in order of what we see here. And that's going to be inside of this photo section. Okay, photo isn't really a photo. It's more of an image, if you will. And it's really good for working with logos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just add this on there. Go ahead and import it. And let's go ahead and find our logo here. I'm going to say bam, much like that. And you can see, oh, that fits in really nicely, right? Gets just perfectly in there with my text and everything like that, right? Doesn't warp it or anything like that. Great. Then my font settings. Notice here is title, name, designation, email, all that stuff. So I'm going to go here to title. And the question is, how big do you want it? So I'm going to say 14. So, okay, that's pretty good. What about 16? Am I pushing that too far? Yep, a little bit too much, but it's very easy to change and I can see it in real time. Okay, I can also bold this, right? You can italicize it, you can underline it, right? I can un-underline it, I can un-italicize it. Very good. You can change the color if you want as well. Let's go over to here to name. Can't really see it there. Definitely need to make that bigger and also a different color. So let's go ahead and make that 14. It's getting bigger, can't see it though. So let's go ahead and make that white. Okay, good, love that. And then any other change you wanna make as well, you can do that. Now let's go over here to email. All right, so email, I want this to come in looking blue, right? So people can really, really see it. And it's also clear that it is, you know, a link of some kind. But I don't want it to be underlined. I'm not a big fan of that. So I can very easily un underline that. And I'm going to keep it at, uh, let's make that 12 so it's readable. Go over to here to website, make that also 12. And then go over to here. And then let's see if I can just grab this color. Perfect. All right. And how close did I get to that? Perfect. There we go. All right. And now we just learned how to use the eyedropper. Okay. And if you have a description of some kind, you can put that in as well. And that's going to show up when you mouse over this here. But let's make that a little bit bigger. 14. And kind of somewhere in the middle there. We're going to see what that's going to look like momentarily. Okay, excellent. We are almost complete with this amazing project, with this amazing tool. And when you're done, guess what? You can save this table of contents to your skin as a whole as well. Earlier, we did just our skin, but our table of contents is also part of this. So if you wanted to override that, just go ahead and click on the save icon. Do you want to replace it? Yes. And now our table of contents is now part of that saved skin. All right, so now let's go ahead and preview this guy. Just do F10. And just watch me as I'm going to go through it. Here's my stuff down below. Here's my little table of contents that I can go ahead and collapse and expand very easily. Okay, good. There's my active slide. That looks really cool. Love it. Good. Excellent. Okay, and then here's my info I was talking about before. There's my red. If you wanted to search, you can search from there, okay? And then if you wanted to clear out your flags, that's what I was talking about down there below, all right? 
So lots and lots of good stuff here. Okay, so you really wanna just experiment with this, have fun with it, but you can really, really kind of add on a lot of you know texture and personality and identity to your whole experience for you and also for your users. And that concludes the second part of our series on Captivate. Congratulations. And once again, we covered a lot of powerful tools in this course. At this stage, you probably already got your feet wet with our first series. So this new material helped you get your e-learning development to the next level. Let's do a little review on what we learned. We started off with the very important skill of learning how to create, edit, and manage our object styles. We then went into importing PowerPoint decks into your Captivate modules, as well as how to make seamless edits to them. We then had a little fun animating our objects to add some movement to your content. We also did a super deep dive on working with audio, including background audio, recording your own audio, editing your audio, and finally using Captivate's text-to-speech audio tools. And the last few lessons were about creating amazing quizzes, wrapping up your modules in some nice looking table of contents and skins. We really did cover a lot. Now, keep in mind, there is still more to Captivate, so stay tuned for the next lesson in our series for yet more exciting tools to incorporate in your e-learning modules. Thanks for watching and happy creating. Thanks for watching. Don't forget we also offer live classes in office applications, professional development, and private training. Visit learnit.com for more details. Please remember to like and subscribe and let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for choosing Learnit.